obviously the most nice. So tonight's topic is called, I'm doing, I'm doing part two of the shameless daughters of Zion, okay? Shameless daughters of Zion, whoredom in the land. Whoredom in the land, shameless daughters of Zion, whoredom in the land. This is series two. This is episode two of that, okay? Let's open up with the book of Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 35. Ezekiel 16, verse 35, let's start there. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verses 35. Go ahead. Whereof, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Read, read on, keep reading. That saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers, and with all the idols of thy abominations, and the blood, and by blood, the and by the blood of my of my of thy children, which thou did give unto them. Okay, read verse 35 and 36 again together. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 35. Where wherefore oh, hear the word of the Lord. So now the Lord is speaking. Hold on. The Lord is speaking to the 12 tribes of Israel, but it also applies specifically for the sisters. Our sister, our lovely sisters, okay? It says, wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Because the Mosai, you see the Mosai, what, he, what he's calling the black woman? A whore. Because of the way, we, the way the sisters behave this day. You understand? Meaning, not all sisters, but many of our sisters, they behave like this. They are whorish-minded sisters. You understand? So the most high God is addressing the sisters this day. Pay attention, sisters. Okay, go ahead. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 36. Thus saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. because thy filthiness was poured out. Because and your thy filthiness nakedness. was, hold on, come on. Because your filthiness was poured out. The filthiness of the daughters of Zion, of the black women, it says is poured out. Meaning what? It's, it's, it's in public. You understand? It's in the open. Everybody can see it. It's not hard to see because our sisters today, the way they dress, the way they conduct themselves on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, you understand? They just shamelessly naked. You understand? And they are pushing for the shamelessness and their nakedness. And the nations now, you see, they look at the, the image of the black woman is, is the image of being this wretched, okay? Hood red. That's the image the that's the image the media is portraying of our sisters. You understand? So we must use the scriptures to clean to clean that up. We must use God's commandments to clean this up. Okay? Read again, verse thirty six. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter sixteen, verse thirty six. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out, read, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers. You see that thing? The nakedness of the black woman is discovered through the whoredom with her lovers. Because the black woman, she's be, she just what? Now, they are proud to be what? They are proud to be prostitutes. They are promoting prostitution in the black community. And they are teaching these young girls to do the same. When we were, going, when we were teaching in Pretoria, that, that was, that's exactly what was going on. And that's what we rebuked. And this, the older sisters prostituting young girls right in front of us. You understand? Stripping them naked. You understand? Girls as young as 14, 15 years old, the press hanging out and all that in public. You understand? And when we were correcting that, we they look at us like we're the devil. You see that thing? Young man with his head between a young girl as, as, as young as 14 years old, his head is between that daughter's his legs. Between, his, between her thighs. His head was between his legs. Between her, between her thighs. And when we're correcting that, they said, we the devil. You can't make it up. You understand? Keep reading. And with all the idols of thy abominations. You see that thing? So this filthiness of the black woman's nakedness through the whoredoms with all these multiple men that they deal with. You understand? Guess what follows next? Idolatry, because that's idolatry. The black woman wants to be worshipped, and how she does it is what? She has to spread her behind all over everyone. You understand? She has to play the whore in the city, on national TV, on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok, on Twitter, all these social media platforms. You understand? The people that are dominating there the most and showing their, 
they are being shameless on, on those platforms is mainly our sisters. You understand? Israelite women. Okay? Guess what happens next? They fall pregnant. They commit abortions. They kill the babies. And the black woman doesn't get, she's not held accountable for the evils that she does. The black man is always held accountable. And the black man is held accountable. And not only that, the black man has to deal with the accountability of the actions that he has committed. Not the black woman. The black woman is not held accountable. She's given license to do evil. That's a fact. You understand? And it's all over the earth. It's not just here in South Africa. It's in the US. You understand? Central America, South America. Okay. Read that again. Verse 36. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 36. Thus mm -hmm. saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers and okay. with all the idols of thy abominations. Mm -hmm. And by the blood of thy children, which thou didst give unto them. You see what they did? It says the blood of thy children, because you give the blood of your children to the idols that you commit, that you worship. You understand? And if that is because of what? Adultery. Because you commit adultery and the government and these organizations, you understand, that fund these, um, these prostitution, whorish houses, guess what? They also, they give the black woman license to do this. You understand? Now watch this. Give me Ezekiel 23:37. Okay. Ezekiel 23:37. Ezekiel 23:37. We're gonna deal with whoredom in the land. You're gonna see the level of whoredom that is happening in the black community. And the government supports it, and these political organ organizations support it. And you've got multiple organizations that are funded by the US, Europe, China, and the South African government to continue to prostitute our black women and their children. Okay, read that. Ezekiel 23, 37. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 37. Wait. That they have committed adultery. They have committed blood. adultery. Because, hold on, that's the main sin. Committing adultery. Whoredom in the land. That's why when you look at the black, in the black community, you understand? Pretoria, Jovek, Alexander. You understand? Midrand, Embisa, Calfontaine. Listen. There's adulteries committed all over, Cape Town. Just look at South Africa alone. You understand? We are, we are the leading, we lead in HIV. You understand? We lead in prostitution. We lead in sex trafficking. We lead in child mon pornography and molestation. We lead in these evil things. You understand? Read again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 37. Go ahead. That they have committed adultery mm -hmm. and blood is in their hands. Abortions. And with their idols, and with their idols, have they committed adultery? Id idolatry. So with, with adultery, with adultery comes what comes idolatry, comes mad. Really? And have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. Abortions. Jump down to verse 43 now. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 43. Come on. Then said I, then said I unto her that was old in adulteries. You see that thing? He said, Then said I unto her that was old in adulteries. Meaning what? This is an old whore. This is an old Mugwanti. This is an old prostitute. You understand? This is an old Mugwanti, meaning she's been around. You understand? Keep human. She's a runaway girl, that, as they call them. She's for the streets. I guess that's, what, that's, how, that's how they sing it now. Who make an Italian who carry be. But she's for the streets. Yes. This woman right here, she's for the streets. And that's many of our sisters. You understand? That's the reality of the situation that we're living in because we live in the communities. We see the evils that is going on, that nobody's saying nothing about it. You understand? It says, and then said I unto her that was old in adultery. Because you see older sisters that are teaching young girls how to become hoes, how to become girlfriends, how to have sex with men, how to show their nakedness all over the community, how to walk around naked, how to dress up naked. We see it when we go to teach. 
We see it when we go to the shops. We see it when we go to, um, to you know, wherever, where you, whether you go to the malls, whether you go to Ekazi, Kolokshini, you go to ShopRite, whatever, all these so We see it everywhere. Nobody is addressing it. But the black man is always held accountable. You understand? So what I'm trying to show you is that there is a bias in terms of what? In terms of exposing the evils that are happening in the community. The abortion is not talked about. Your teenage pregnancy, when it's talked about, is the black man's fault. Then nobody actually examines, where's the mother here? So is, what example is this child seeing? Is the mother teaching their, their daughter the laws of God? Is their mother teaching their daughter, uh, you know, you understand, how to be a woman, how to be a, how to grow up to be a righteous daughter? Meaning what? Keep her busy. She must learn how to cook, how to sew, how to clean, how to, you understand, chores in the house. Because when you do that, the government says, no, 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 you are abusing your child. So which one is it? You understand? Now read again, verse 43. The book of Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 43. Then Come said on. I unto her that was old in adulteries. Mm -hmm. Will they now commit whoredom with her and yeah. she with them? You see that thing? Well, he says, will they now commit whoredom with her? Yes. They are committing horror with our sisters. You understand? And the government is giving them license to do it. Okay? That's why now there's this thing about decriminalized sex work. You see what they call it? Sex work. No, that's prostitution. Go further. Hordom in the land. God calls it hordom. Because now they are using politically correct terms. They say sex work. Just like they did with Gisangoma. But no, is traditional healers. Mm -mm. Kibuloi. Those are witches, according to the Bible. We're not going to sugarcoat nothing as it is written in the Holy Bible. You understand? So sex work is what? Sex work is prostitution. You understand? They're giving you license to be a whore. Understand that? Okay. Read again verse 43. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 43. Then right. said I unto her that was old in adulteries. Mm -hmm. Will they now commit whoredoms with her and she with them? And yes, she is committing horror with them. Go ahead. Yet they have they went in unto her as they, went, they go. You see, they went in unto her as they walk. As they go in unto a woman that playeth the harlot. Remember what the Lord said when we read in Ezekiel 16:35. The Lord says, I'm talking to you, you hope. The most high God is saying, Yet they went in unto her, meaning the men that are committing adultery. Because guess what? When you decriminalize prostitution, guess what? You are giving the black women license to be a whore. And guess what? She also going to teach her children to be whores too. You understand? And I'm going to show you that because don't get shocked. I'm going to show you the things that are taking place in this country. You understand? Is that they went in unto her as they go in unto a woman that played the harlot. Because sex work, which is prostitution, guess what? Yes, you are being given license to be a whore to be a prostitute, okay? Read on. So they went in unto, so went they in unto Ahola and unto Aholiba, the lewd Read. woman. The lewd woman, go ahead. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses. The righteous men is us. When we go to the streets, we rebuke them. We teach our people to repent. We teach the black woman to cover her behind up, to stop showing her cleavage and showing her thighs, wearing pentacles throughout day. We are teaching them God's laws. Black woman, the Bible says cover up because you are the daughters of Zion. You understand? Because they are following the fourth wave of feminism where they say, no, you have a right to your body and all of that. No, your body don't belong to you. It belongs to the most High God. And God gives you guidelines on how to cover that body up, how to protect it, how to honor it meaning cover it up because it's a sacred, it's, it's sacred. The way you protect it, you keep your body clean and sanctified, you cover it up because it's not supposed to be seen by everybody that passes by, but your husband. You see that thing right there? But when we teach them, they say, no, we are being abusive. Shut the hell up. How can me teaching my daughters to cover up, how can that be abusive? You got to be crazy. You understand? The government is not here when I'm taking care of my girls. The government doesn't give me money to take care of my daughters. The government don't do that. 
You understand? The most that God teaches us, we must take care of our children, including the, especially the daughters. You understand? We must teach them how to dress, how to sit, how to be a woman. You understand? To prepare to be a wife, not to be a girlfriend, not be a lesbian. You understand? Read. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses and Read. after the manner of women that shed blood. Abortions. Because they commit, they commit adultery, they fall pregnant. Guess what? They commit abortions because she still wants to continue to what? To sell sex. Keep reading. Because they are adulteresses and they are adulteresses. They are adulteresses, meaning what? Prostitutes. Buffet, they hold them in the land, hold them in our communities. You understand? It is because they are adulteresses and blood is in their hands. Because what did they do when they fall pregnancy? I'm not ready. They kill the baby. No, no, no. They murder the baby because it is murder. You understand? And guess what the white man has done? The government has followed this white man, this demonic white man, to say, listen, um, no, it's not a baby, it's a fetus in you. No, 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 that's a life. It's not a fetus. That is why they say it's a fetus, it's so that it does not, it's not it, does, it's, it doesn't, it's the, it, the reality is, is not clear to you that you are actually killing a, a, a life in your body. That's why they say, no, it's a fetus, it's not a baby yet. No, it's not prostitution, it's sex work. You see that thing? It's the same thing. That's the fourth wave of feminism. You understand? So that's what we're leading in. The most High God is teaching us these are the things that our sisters will be doing in these last days. And our sisters are not held accountable. When we, the men of God, come with the Bible, they say, no, we are oppressing them. No, toxic masculinity. No, we hate patriarchy. But the reason why you are here today is because of a man. What are you talking about? You understand? We are pro patriarchy because that's how the Bible has set things up on this earth. You understand? So we're going to teach the Bible without fear. No fear, no favor. Okay? Understand that thing. Now read that verse again, verse 45. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 45. And the righteous yeah. men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses and after the manner of women that shed blood because... Yes. They are adulteresses and blood mm -hmm. is in their hands. You see, it says because they are adulteresses. The reason why we, the prophets, have to bring out the scriptures is because these sisters, our sisters, we love them, but we are going to tell them the truth. Thus saith the Lord. You understand? Give me that in Revelation 3, verse 18. We are going to teach our sisters God's commandments because guess what? Just as the black man has to be held accountable, so must the black woman be held accountable. Why? Because we are building a nation here. You understand? And in order for the nation to be built, the black man must stand up. And the black man is standing up, getting himself right, keeping God's commandments, teaching God's commandments. Now it's time for the black woman to be held accountable, to be taught God's laws so she can learn to submit to her black man. Instead of submitting to the white man, that teaches her to, de that teaches her to what? To disconnect from her black man. Because that's the white man's agenda. The white man's agenda and her white woman is to teach the black woman to disconnect from her black men. That's the agenda on this earth. And these clueless black Negroes called Bu President, Bu Ramaphosa, Bu Mkwem Mkwem, Bu Bu Nkankalags, they don't know nothing about building a nation. They are the reason why now we have to undo the evils that they are doing. Because as we are building, we're not, they are destroying with politics and democracy. Understand that? I want to show you the war that we're in. Okay? Read that for me. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Come on. The book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 18. I counsel thee to buy off me gold tied in the fire. The, 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 the gold tied in the fire, the gold tied in the fire, that's the Bible. The Bible is that gold that is tied in the fire that also represents Christ. Go ahead. That thou mayest be rich mm -hmm. in good works. Read. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. That's the righteousness, go ahead. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. That the what? That, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. That the shame of thy nakedness does not appear. This thing called sex work, guess what? They are decriminalizing prostitution, right? They are giving our black women license to have sex. 
Not only because you might think, no, it's just old hoes. It's old prostitute. No, no, no. These old prostitutes, they have kids. So they are children. And a lot of them, they've got girls. So the girls will look at their mother and say, but my mother is changing men every day. So what type of life am I going to live? I'm going to do the same thing my mother's doing. I'm also going to be a what? I'm going to be a licensed prostitute because that's what decriminalization of sex work means. License to be a whore. License to play the whore in your father's house. You understand that thing? So if you, that means your daughter can decide one day, say, you know what, father, me, I'm fine. I don't want to go to varsity. I want to be a sex worker. I want to be a prostitute. Could you imagine that? Because those are the things that are going to start coming up. You need to understand that that's what's coming. Okay? That is what's coming. And you cannot say no. If you say no, she'll, the government is given a license to take you to court. Or But this thing is according to the law. Give me that in Psalms. All this, we coming back here. Give me Psalms 94. Okay? I wanted to pull this piece up later on, but I, have to, I gotta put it now. Psalms 94 verse 20. I'm gonna show you what this decriminalization of sex work means. This is what it means. And who's behind this whole thing? The white man. I'm gonna show you that. Give me Psalms 94 verse 20. The book of Psalms chapter 94 verse 20. Go ahead. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Shall Which the throne, the throne, hold on. The throne is a kingdom. Shall the kingdom of, of, of sin, the kingdom of America is the kingdom of sin. Europe is a kingdom of sin. And all these European allies that are supporting America and all these other nations that support Europe and America, all they also, they are the throne of iniquity, the kingdom of sin. Read. Which frameth mischief by law. They frame mischief by a law. They set up laws to do what? To, they set up laws to license evil in the community. And the evils that they license through government bylaws and clauses, they don't affect white communities or Indian communities or Chinese communities. No, they always affect the black community all the time. We always, we are the ones that are always getting the short end of the stick because of these clueless black need, these clueless ashy black Negroes that are in parliament, that are what that are passing laws to destroy their own community. You understand? That's what's going on right now. Okay? And they get funded by America. They get funded by Europe. They get funded by China. Understand what's going on? They get funded by India. Okay? That is what's going on right now. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Read the verse again, verse 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 20. Shall the right. throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, mm -hmm. which frameth mischief by law, they frame mischief, meaning they set up, they put up laws to what? To legalize prostitution. So guess who's, who, guess who, who's toy toying on the streets for prostitution to be legalized? Is the black woman. And guess who's supporting the black woman? The white woman. Because whenever you see black women toy toying, guess what? In this instance, you see, you'll see black women toy toying, pushing for them, them to, to be given license, to become prostitute, to become whores, defend it. Because that's what it is. Guess what? Guess who's uh, is the backbone? The white woman. Guess who's, who's supporting the broadcast? The white man. The white man is supporting it because he's broadcasting these things. Watch this. Give me that in 2nd Maccabees chapter 7. Okay. 2nd Maccabees chapter 7. 2nd Maccabees chapter 7 verse 31. Because the feminist movement, when it started, it was the white woman having issues with her white man. And guess what? The white man gave license to the white woman to do what? To start to say, no, we also want the rights to vote and so forth. Then the second wave of feminism, guess what happened? They said, no, we did not include the black woman because the white woman's movement, when she wanted more powers, she needed more people. She needed more backing. Guess who she brought in? She brought the black woman in. The black woman joined that thing in the 60s. You see that thing right there? So now the black woman has joined the white woman with, with the problems that she has with her white man. By so doing, she was taken away from the black man. Now she no longer submits to the black man. She disrespect and belittle and look down on the black man, but she submits to the white man. That has always been the agenda. You understand? It's always been the agenda. And guess what? 
That's the reason why you see our black community so destroyed. When the black man is standing up with the Bible now, they say, no, we are Bible Buddhists. That's what they say, babe. When we're trying to set our nation back in order and in honor. You see that thing? Read them. Second Maccabees 7 verse 31. This is during the time of the Greeks. And guess what? The Greeks is white people. The Romans is white people. You understand? They can call themselves Jewish people. They are all white people. Esau, Edom. Really. Second book of Maccabees 7 verse 31. And thou right. has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Do not escape the hands of God. Uh, they said they'd been what? Read that part again. And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shalt not escape the hands of God. You see what God is saying? He says, and thou, talking to the white man now, he said that you have been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. What are they authoring? What mischief is the white man authoring against us? Guess what? They are passing laws to promote prostitution in our community. They are passing laws to, to promote abortion in our community. They are passing laws to promote teenagers having sex. Because what are they doing? They, they flood our communities with condoms. You understand? They flood our communities with what? There's a bottle store at every corner. They flood our communities with abortion slaughterhouses at every corner. They do it during the apartheid era. During the apartheid era, guess what? They were, they were the ones that were bringing drugs in our community. They were bringing cocaine. You understand? They were bringing, um, you know, yeah, cocaine. They were bringing ecstasy. They brought ecstasy now in, in our community. You understand? When they were shooting our forefathers and foremothers that were fighting for civil rights in South Africa, when they were shooting them with tear gases, you know what was in those tear gases? In those tear gases, there was what? There was chemicals that were designed to what? to make our mothers sterile, you understand? And to make them infertile. So when they inhale the tear gas, it will cause a chemical reaction in the body to stop them from producing kids. That's what they would do, you understand? To what, to, they, they would put tear, they would put chemicals in there to make our, our brothers and sisters to me, to me more susceptible to drugs, ecstasy, you understand? Alcohol, you see that thing right there? They would put poison in the alcohol because guess what? They knew that, you know, that's what we was doing. Drinking, that's why I bottle stored every corner. So that's the same thing they did back then. They are still doing it today. The chemical and biological warfare program that the Boers was doing during apartheid, it has never stopped. It's still going on today. They just do it in a different way. And now they have the power of the media behind them to push them. Now, not only that, you've got evil, black, clueless Negroes called leaders in the government. You understand? They've got, they've got top positions in the government. You understand? They are siding with the white man because the white man is giving them crops to go against their own people. I'm going to tell you, they really, they vex my spirit. You understand? Because they are, they are anti-revolutionary. They are counter-revolutionary to the greatest movement on earth. Guess what? They are not going to stop this movement. Their mission is a goal. I want you to read that thing again, verse 31. Okay. Second, Maccabu, second book of Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 31. Go ahead. And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shalt mm -hmm. not escape the hands of God. You shall what? Shalt not escape the hands of God. You shall not escape the hands of God. Now, Give me that in uh, First Maccabees, okay, chapter five, verse seventy-two. No, 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 first second is first Ezra, okay, first Ezra five, first Ezra chapter five and verse seventy-three. Watch this. First book of Ezra, chapter five, verses seventy-three. Right. And by their secret plots. Mm -hmm. and popular persuasions and commotions. Yeah. They hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So that yeah, they right were... There. Stop right there. Read the verse again. Read the verse again. I'm sorry. Read it again. First book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 73. Mm -hmm. And by their secret plots... Their secret and, plots... Hey, hold on there. And by their secret plots... Because remember, these white people... You understand? They sit behind closed doors 
and they sit with black Negroes, these bourgeoisie black Negroes who hate their own people. You understand? They only they want to please master at the expense of their people. It says by their secret plots. And guess what? What else? Keep going. And the popular persuasions. And popular persuasions. That's the media. That's the newspaper. Guess what that is? Social media. TikTok. You understand? You understand? WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. All these social media platforms. Guess what? They are using those social media platforms. You understand? Those platforms is platforms for our sisters, mainly our people, to do what? To show how foolish we are because we are no longer keeping God's commandments. You understand? We are no longer keeping God's commandments, and they know this because they they what they perverted our, our Bible. They took the Bible and made the Bible a universal book. The white man is the one that did that, by the way. He made our Bible a universal book. That the Bible is a book of everyone. No, the Bible is not a book of everyone. And so because of that, now our people don't think that the Bible is their book. So now because of that, and the white man has been pushing that all the images in the Bible is white. Now our people, they just think they are nothing because we are at the bottom. We are at the bottom. All the nations are sitting on top of us. You see that thing? So we don't see any value in us. So the best thing to do is what? Is just to, the sisters, especially them, they, they said, no, we decriminalize sex work, push abortion in the community, teenage pregnancy. You don't have the right to tell the black woman to do nothing because that's her body. If she wants to commit murder and murder after murder, she can do it, that's her body. The white woman is not doing that. The Chinese woman is not doing that. The Arab woman is not doing that. It's only the black woman that's doing that. Because that was a quote that said, then the, the most dangerous place for a child to be is in the womb of a black woman because they get put to death by a, through abortion. Imagine that. Chew the car on that thing. Okay. Chew the car on that. Now let's go back. Go back to um go back to Revelation 3, verse 18. Go back there. Okay, come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 18. Go ahead. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Ray. That thou mayest be rich. And mm -hmm. white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. You see that and, thing? And that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear. That's what we're trying to teach our sisters. That sis, cover up. Because your body is your temple. Your body is a temple. You understand? And your body houses the laws of God. You're supposed to keep God's commandments. That's how you take care and honor your body. Honor the Lord by taking care of the body, the life that he gave you. Because you are daughters of, of Zion. You're not supposed to conduct yourself this way. But when we get on our sisters, they get mad. Why? Because they've been conditioned to submit to the white man and to what? To disrespect the black man. I'm going to prove that thing right now. Watch this. Okay? I'm going to prove it right now. Watch this thing. Okay? Now, I want you to read that. This is um, part of the Willie Lynch letter. Okay, so I want you to read that. This is page 31. Let's make a slave. Read that. I'm going to show you that demon called Willie Lynch. This is what he did to the black woman. The reason why you see the black, our sisters behave the way that they do today is because of what the white man, what the white man did here. Watch this. Read that thing for me. Reading from the Willie Lynch letter. Let's mm -hmm. make a slave. Okay, come on. The breaking process of the African woman. That's the Israelite woman. Read. Then take the female and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desire willingly. You see, you see that thing? Who's talking it? The white men are talking it. Esau Edom, the white man, he says, then take the female and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desire willingly. The reason why you see the white, the, 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 our sisters, they don't, they don't fight the program that the white man has set up. You understand? Because the white man is giving the black women so a lot of freedoms. So they think. And these freedoms, they are not designed to make them to be quote unquote free. These freedoms that they are given to them to do what? To go against the black man, to disrespect the black man, to destroy her own community and to kill her own children 
and what that the shame of a nakedness does is not is not is not covered but is seen in the open you understand that that's why they give the black women better jobs they give them better positions and guess what they the white man is intimidated by the black man that's why in the office the black woman always gets a better job than the black man all the time you understand? They'll choose, they'll rather choose the black woman over the black man in terms of giving, in terms of employment. You, you understand that? We see it all the time. And when the black woman is put in that position, she submits completely to the will of the white man. We see it in the plantations where we work. You understand? And we're not taking anything from our sisters that they've got good jobs and all of that. The problem is these sisters, when they are married, you understand, even when they are not married, because they earn more than the black man, they, they now they deal with the black man like yen ish. They don't submit themselves to the black man. They say they wear pants in the house. The white woman don't do that. The white woman submits to her man. The black woman is the only one that says stuff like that. But what program is, whose program is she, is she running? The white man's program. Read that part again, the breaking process of the African woman. Reading from the letters of Willie Lynch, the breaking mm -hmm. of the African woman. Then take the female and run a series of tests and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desire willingly. That's the same thing that happened in the garden. When this, the white man, that spirit, the same spirit of the white man is the serpent in the garden. You understand? When, she, when he deceived Eve to go against her husband. That's the same thing that Willie Lynch did. Willie Lynch deceived the, 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 the black woman to, to go against the black man. And that's what you are seeing today. You understand? And now the black woman, the things that she's doing, she's not being held accountable. When the black men speak up, but no toxic masculinity, no, but you are sexist, but you hate women. You see that thing? Hey, gender-based violence. That's what the, I'm not saying gender-based violence don't exist. Don't get it twisted. But what I am saying is that the, the way in which the black woman deals with the black man is completely because of the program that is running in a that was implemented by the white man. That's what I'm trying to show you. Keep reading. Test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. I want you to stop right there. Read that part again. Test her in every way because mm -hmm. she is the most important factor for good economics. You see what the Bible, you see, we see, we see what Willie Lynch said. He says, test the black woman in every way, meaning make sure she will submit to your will. You understand? Willingly. And I'm going to show you how they did it. He says, test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. Meaning what? When you look in, the, in our communities, right, you see that. Um, the Chinese come in, they selling weaves. The East Indians come in, the Arabs, they selling weaves. You understand who buys them? The black woman. You understand? Because weaves is big business. Understand that when it comes to pants, you understand leggings, bum shorts, mini skirts, you understand low cut tops where they show your cleavage. Who's buying these things? The black woman is doing that. Hair products where they relax their hair. Who's buying all these things? The black woman. All these philosophies, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Christmas, New Year, you understand? Women's Month, Women's Day. Who's supporting all these things that the white man has set up? The black woman. And guess what she does? She teaches the, the kids to do the same. You see that thing right there? That's why she's a good, she's the most important factor for good economics. Because they get to make money in the black community. Guess who, who they are using? The black woman. That's what you need to understand. That's why you go to the banks, you go to the to the to the tills, you go to these pick and pays and all that. Who's operating the tills? The black woman the most. You go to the banks. Who's working in the as the tellers? The black woman. You understand? Go to the government departments. When you get to those booths, who's working there? The black woman. And the way they deal with the black men is so wretched, so disrespectful. I've seen it many times. But when the white man walks in, they know how to say say. When the white woman works in, they know how to say men. But when you walk in, they just say, mm, yeah, so for now, who's in that? They don't greet you, don't say nothing. I've seen this thing. 
You understand? Conditioned to go against their own people. Read that part again. Test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. You see that thing? Keep reading. Come on. If she knows, if she shows any signs of resistance in submitting completely to your will, mm -hmm. do not hesitate to use the bull whip on her to extract the last bit of pitch out of her. You see what the white man did? Is as if she shows any sign of resistance in submitting completely to your will. Whose will? The will of the white man. Is as do not hesitate to use the bull whip on her to extract the last bit of bitch out of her. You see what the white man did? That's why the black woman submits completely to the white man. She directly or indirectly. That's why who's who's filling up the church is worshiping white Jesus? The black woman. She's the one that's filling up the churches. I'll give another example, right? When you look at, um, in terms of taking care of children, because we teach that the men must take care of their children. We apply the scriptures. But watch this. Give me that in 1 Timothy 5, because I, before I go any further, I'm going to use the example, right? I'm going to use this. Okay, I'm going to show you really what's going on. 1 Timothy 5, verse 8, because this is what we teach in soldiers of Christ, because that's what the Bible teaches. So we subscribe to this, really. First Timothy 5 verse 8. The book, first book of Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. Mm -hmm. But if any provide not for his own, and mm -hmm. especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You see that part right there? It's as if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So we teach that men must take care of their wives, must take care of their children, because that's what we teach, because that's what the Bible commands. Now, what I'm going to show you is that, but in the government, in the in society, the black woman, she can fall pregnant, right? She can say, you know what, I don't want the baby. And the men can say, but I want the baby. Me, I want to be a father. The black woman, she says, me, I don't want the child. I don't want to be a baby. So I don't want to have a baby. I don't want to be a mother. I'm not ready. So therefore, I'm going to have to, I'm going to go and commit an abortion. The black man has no say. The black woman will not be held accountable for the evil that she's doing, which is murder. But if the black man decides, or me, I don't want to take care of that child. And the black woman says, me, I want the child. Guess what the black woman has, well, guess what the black woman will do? She will take the man to where? To court. To force him to pay what? Child support. You see this thing? I'm trying to show you how the system is set up. It's set up to favor the black woman to do evil. It's not set up to, it's not set up for the black woman to do good, to support her community and to support her husband. No, it's set up for the black woman to do evil. When she does, she does evil, the, the, the system supports it. But when she does good, she's cast out of the system. That's how things are set up. Understand that I'm just showing you the double standards in terms of what how the black man is treated by the white man and how the black woman is treated by the white man and her white woman. You, you see that thing right there? So what I'm showing you here is in the letters of Willie Lynch. The way the black woman behaves and when we show the black woman says, you're not supposed to conduct yourself this way. How is it that you hear the word of God but you're still running the program of the white man, of the oppressor? What that mean? That means you're still moving according to your foremother Eve, who decided to, to go against her own husband to listen to the white man. And today is the same thing, because the fourth wave of feminism, who started the feminist movement? The white woman. Who joined the white woman in this feminist garbage? The black woman. Now the black woman is taking, her, is taking it upon herself to bring the same garbage and philosophy in her own community to destroy your community from within. One of which is what? The current thing that's going on right now, sex work. Because sex work is part of the fourth wave of feminism. Understand that? Which is hoarding in the black community. Who's bringing that in? The black woman. You understand? That is what's going on, okay? Okay, that's it on that. Now watch this. Give me Jeremiah 3 verse 1. 
Jeremiah 3 and verse 1. Let's read them. Because this sex work, because I mean, as soldier, soldier Jonah, he sent me an article on this. So I decided, let me do some deeper research on this thing. And the stuff I found out, man, they make my skin crawl. They really vex my spirit. I'm like, I have to do a class about this thing. Give me that in Jeremiah 3 verse 1. The book of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 1. They right. say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, mm -hmm. shall he return unto her again? Where? Shall not the land be greatly polluted? Shall not that land, shall not that land be greatly polluted? What is the land? He's talking about, he's talking about what? He's talking about the sister. Because she's dealing with multiple men. You understand? Her vagina is polluted. That's what the Lord is going into here. When he says, shall not that land be greatly polluted? Yes, because when she's sleeping with all these multiple men, guess what they do? These men, they sex her, multiple men, because we're only supposed to sleep with one man all your life. That's it. So because we understand that our sisters in the world, because they don't know this truth, they are still living a whorish life. But when you come into the truth, you're supposed to get rid of that old whorish woman and bury her. And now start to what to put the newness of life, put the spirit of Christ and apply God's commandments and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You understand? You change the way you dress, the way you think, the way you make decisions. All of them must change. So what we're reading here, the Lord is saying, shall not that land be greatly polluted? So who's going to be polluting this sister spirit and physically? The man that will sex her. You understand? Because a man has sperm, produces sperm. That sperm is alive. It moves. When it enters into a, womb, into a woman, guess what? It's not just okay. It's not just a pleasure thing. No. It's beyond that. It's physical and it's spiritual. That man's spirit will jump on you. So if you are a prostitute, because they say sex work, mm -mm, it's prostitution. You sleep with five, four, three, five men a day. Different type of men. How many spirits do you think you have on you? You think you're not going to be crazy? You know, you're not filled with demons. Of course you are. You understand? And that's why we're bringing these classes out. Read again. Verse 1. The book of Jeremiah 3 verse 1. They say, Read. if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Mm -hmm. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Right. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. You see that thing? Thou, thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Prostitution. The politically correct term, they want to confuse our people, they, particularly the black women and the younger ones, by the way. Because these older sisters, they are not setting the right example to these young girls. So the young girls are looking at them on how they move, what they do. You understand? Guess what? They mimic what they see. The mother is a whore. The daughter going to be a whore. You understand? The son seeing his mother, you understand, is changing multiple men. Guess what the son will do when he grows up? He's going to grow up dealing with multiple women, sexing all these women and not marrying them. Popping babies, creating babies all over and not marrying them, not taking care of the kids. That is God with all these baby mamas. You see that thing? That, that, that means there's going to be whoredom in the land. That's why he says, shall not that land be greatly polluted, but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Prostitution. Now they want to legalize that day. That's why it says decriminalization. They're using all these fancy terms so you don't get it. No, it's called legalizing, legalizing prostitution. That's what that means. Okay? Now watch this. Give me Ezekiel 16, 24. Ezekiel 16, verse 24. Let's read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verses 24. Go ahead. That thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place mm -hmm. and hast made thee an high place in every street. You see what the black woman has done? is as you have built unto thee an eminent place. That's why when you go to whether it's the suburbs, whether it's in mid-rent, whether it's in all these fancy suburbs, you understand? Whether it's in the gases. The Lord is saying the black woman they have built unto them an, an, an eminent place. Because these prostitutes now, they rent places in 
they they rent in these complexes in the in the rural in the in the urban areas. You understand? Guess what they do? Men they they know in that complex there's multiple women that are their job they are selling sex. You understand? So that's why it says thou has also built unto thee an eminent place, meaning a place where men come and buy sex from you because you sell it. You understand? That's the eminent place, the brothel. Now these brothels are disguised as massage parlors. We see them all over, Bumidrent and all that. Santen especially, they are what they are disguised as massage parlors, but they are actually brothels where they sell sex. Okay, those are the eminent places. Then it says, and it's made the and high place in every street. So every street, now guess what? You're gonna meet these harlots, you're gonna meet these hoes. Because now once it's, it's, it's legalized, it's gonna be all over the place. You're not gonna be able to stop this. Right now they are doing it behind closed doors, but once it's legalized, it's gonna be everywhere. You're not gonna be able to tell them nothing. You understand? Keep reading. Thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way mm -hmm. and made thy beauty to be a board. Now the beauty, and the real, the hold on, the true beauty of the black woman is hated. No, is 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 not known. You understand? Because the fake beauty is the one that is seen, which is what? Be obnoxious, be arrogant, be disrespectful, be loud. You understand? You understand? Dress half naked, disrespect your father, your mother, you understand, your parents and so forth, your husband, your brother. You, you see those things? So that's why it says, thou hast what? Read that part again. Thou hast built thy place at every head of the way. Mm -hmm. And has made thy beauty to be abhorred. And has made your beauty to be abhorred. Because now the image of the black woman is hated. The black woman's image now is garbage. You understand? All the media portrays of what the black woman she knows how to do is to shake her bum on TikTok and to twerk and to dress half naked. You understand? Not, no, not to take care of her kids. She's just going around, just holding herself out. That's her image today. She's loud. She never gets married. Nobody wants to marry her. That's the image of the black woman today. Keep reading. And has made thy beauty to be a board and has opened thy feet to everyone that passed by. You see that thing? You open your legs to everyone that passes by. Today they call it sex work. No, it's prostitution. We're gonna call it like it is. Prostitution, go further. Hold them in our community. You understand? Go ahead. And multiplied thy hordoms. You multiply thy hordoms. How do you multiply thy hordoms? He says the black woman is multiplying her hordoms. So this is addressing the older sisters. How are they multiplying their hordoms? Give me Leviticus 1929. Let me show you how the black woman multiplies her hordoms. Watch this. I'm gonna show you how she does it. Leviticus 19 verse 29. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 verses 29. Go ahead. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. So these older mm. sisters, remember it says, hair that was old in adulteries, like we read in Ezekiel 23, is as hair that was old in adulteries. You understand? That means this is an old prostitute. She's been around the block. She's been a so-called sex work for 15 years. That means she's been a whore for 15 years. She's old in adulteries. What is she doing? She's prostituting her daughter now. Now she's gonna teach her daughter to be a prostitute as well. That's, that's, what, that's why the most I wrote this thing right here says, do not prostitute your daughter to cause your daughter to be a whore, to be a so-called sex work. Sex work means prostitute. Mugwanti. That's what it means. Okay? Read again. Verse 29. The book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not mm -hmm. prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Read. Let the land fall to hold them and the land become full of wickedness. You see that thing? Let the land fall to hold them. The reason why you see now the land has fallen to hold them is because black women are prostituting their daughters. Because your daughter will, will she learn by example. Your example of being a whore, of being a prostitute, you call it sex work. No, it's prostitution. 
Guess what? You teaching your daughter to do the same. You understand? The way they dress, the way you dress your child, the way you dress your daughter, you put leggings on your, on your five-year-old. You put leggings on your 10-year-old. You are prostituting that child because that's horrid apparel. That's not modest apparel, according to how God commanded the black woman to dress. You dress your daughter like a mini skirt, like a bum short. A 15-year-old knows how to wear um, a cleavage that top yet you are one at 12. What about a mini skirt? She not really, she's not even have a panty on. They know how to smoke, but no. she knows how to have sex now. But no, it's her life, it's her body. So it's her life, it's her body. So you're okay with your daughter being a prostitute. Yeah, that's the mindset of the black woman. Ostrich, you understand? Read again verse 29. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 29. Do Go not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Mm -hmm. Is the land bottom and the land become full of wickedness? The land become full of wickedness. What is the wickedness? Hoddom. Why? Because black women are prostituting their own children. And I'm going to show you that thing. I'm going to prove it to you. Now, go back to where he was at now. Go back to Ezekiel 16. Okay. Verse 25 again. Because I'm going, I went here to show you how the black woman is multiplying her, her hoddoms. You understand? She, she, what, she gets the children involved in this. Read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verses 25. Go ahead. Thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way, and hast made thy beauty to be abhorred, and hast opened thy feet to everyone that passed by, and multiplied mm -hmm. thy whoredoms. And multiplied thy whoredoms. How does she multiply? She multiplies it by teaching the children now. Now the children are taught what it means. They are taught about having a boyfriend. You understand? Your daughter can bring a boyfriend to your house now. So you can meet. I see these sisters that say, no, I want to meet your boyfriend. Talking to their daughter. You understand? That's what they do now. You understand? Bring your boyfriend. Bring your boyfriend to dinner so the two I can cook and he can eat. That's what they do. They are the ones that allow their daughters to go on dates with these boys. They do that. We see it all the time. You understand? Go to the mall, be safe. Hey, use a condom. Make sure that you are safe. If anything happens, make sure that you are safe. The mother gives their daughter a condom to make sure that because she, that's, that means she's prostituting your daughter. She's giving a, a daughter license to have sex. And when they fall pregnant, the mother is the one that what? The mother is the one that may call to say, listen, we, I need to, she needs to have an abortion. She's not ready to be a, a mother yet. She's still young. She still needs to finish school. But you didn't think about that before you gave her a condom. You didn't think about it when you're allowing your daughter to be idle. You understand? You don't teach her nothing. You don't teach her how to clean. She don't know how to clean. 15 year old, she don't know how to wash dishes. 15, she don't know how to, even how, how to wash her own paint. You can't make it up yet. You see that thing? She don't know how to wash she don't know how to clean the house. None of that stuff. She don't know how to sew because you're not keeping it busy because you don't know how to do it. So the only thing that you can do is teach your daughter to be a whore just like you. Ezekiel 16.44. We coming back the here to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 16. Uh, verse 25. Read that verse 44. The book of Ezekiel 16 verses 45. Go ahead. 44. 44. Excuse me, sir. The book of Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 44. Behold, Great. everyone that useth proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, mm -hmm. as is the mother, so is a daughter. As is the mother, so is a daughter. That's the proverb. That is the evil saying that they will say about you. As is the mother, so is her daughter. Because the mother, she will multiply her whoredoms by teaching her daughter how to be a whore. Like we read in Leviticus 19.29, when the most high God explicitly said, do not prostitute your daughter to cause your daughter to be a whore. But the black woman, because she's got rights, because the white man is given a license to be a whore, she's going to teach her child as well. You see that thing? That is what's going on this day. Now, read verse, read verse 26 now. Ezekiel 16, 26. The book of Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors. You see that? Great. Thing? It says the black woman is committing a boy fornication, which is sexual sins 
with the Egyptians, her neighbors. Because remember, he's making reference to all Egypt. Because when we, what were we in Egypt? We were slaves. Today we are under spiritual Egypt, under America, Europe. You understand? And all these other countries that support America and the European nations. The Lord is saying the black woman is playing for me, is what committing a fornication with the Egyptians, with our slave masters. How? Because the slave masters, they implement laws to give the black woman license to be a whore. The black woman grabs that and she takes the same philosophy. She brings it to her own community. The same way our foremother Eve took the philosophy from the white man and brought to her, to her husband, Adam. That's what the black woman is doing today. She's taking the philosophy of the white man, the, you understand, Europeans and all that. She's bringing it into the black community. She's implementing it. The same thing that our foremother Eve did in the garden. The same thing that the black woman is doing today because Eve is your format. You understand? Read. Behold, therefore, I have the book of Ezekiel. Let's say six again. This is 26. Excuse me, sir. Come on. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors. Mm -hmm. Great of flesh. Great of flesh. It says great of flesh. It goes into what? It goes into their 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 um, their rod, their sexual organs. It goes into that. It says thou was committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, because that's all they care about. It's all about sex, sex, and more sex. Keep reading. And has increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. So the Lord is saying the reason why the black woman is busy spreading her behind all over sleeping with anything that moves because she wants to get paid. The most High God it says the reason why she does that is to provoke him to anger. So when she does that, she's taking the philosophy of the white man because they frame mischief by a law. What is the mischief? Prostitution is mischief. Prostitution is what? That the mischief means sin. That's the mischief. You understand? So the Lord is said the reason why the black woman does that is to provoke him to anger. Okay, jump down to verse 28. Read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians. You see that thing? So she keeps moving from one, you're a slave master to another, because these are all slave masters here. That means whatever philosophy that the slave master brings, the black woman will grab it with both hands and bring it to her own community to destroy it from within. Keep reading. Because thou wast unsatiable. Meaning uncontrollable. You couldn't help yourself. You're, there's an itch down there, you want to scratch it. It doesn't matter at what cost. Even if it will cost your nation great harm, the black woman will do it. That's what the Bible is saying. Read. Thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet mm -hmm. could not be satisfied. That's why the black woman doesn't stop. If it's not the abortion, guess what? It's if it's not the abortion, is what? If, if it's not, it's not be me give, them being given license to kill and murder their kids, is what? Is legalization of what? Legalization of um of of, of prostitution. Legalization of if it's not legalization of prostitution, guess what? Is the LGBT community, the alphabet community. If it's not homosexuality, it's prostitution. If it's not prostitution, it's abortion, it's murder. You see that thing? These are the philosophies that the black woman has adopted and she's bringing those evils into her community. No, no women of the island, there's no women of these, are these nations doing that. They don't take that back into their own communities. It's the only, the, the black woman is the only one that does it. And guess what? These clueless so-called black leaders, the presidents, they do the same too. Because they also, they are playing the whole with these European nations, with America, with China, with India. All these business deals that they are making, they also, they are playing the whole. And they take the systems that they see in America, they bring it here. They see a system implemented in the UK, they bring it here. In China, they bring it here. You see that thing? The same mindset. Now read verse 30. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 30. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God, seeing 
thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious Polish woman. Now that's a heavy verse right there. Read the verse again, verse 30. I'm going to show you something with this verse. Read it. The book of Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 30. Mm -hmm. How weak is the heart, saith the Lord God, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious Polish woman. So the Lord is saying the black woman's mind is weak because she managed to allow the white man to destroy the greatest kingdom on earth. Because remember, the greatest kingdom that was ruled by a black man, Adam, who destroyed them? The black woman did it. You see that thing? So now it says, how weak is your heart, said the Lord God, seeing you do us all these things. What is these things? Cordon, idolatry, adultery. You understand? Taking all the philosophies of the slave masters and bringing them into our communities. You understand? Prostitution, abortion, teenage pregnancy. You understand? Lesbianism, homosexuality. You understand? That's what they're bringing, meaning I can dress however I want. I can dress like a prostitute. You can't tell me nothing. You, you understand? These are all the philosophies that are, what, that are pushed in the black community by the white man through the black woman. So now the Lord is getting on the black woman and says, you, are in, you, are the, you do the work of an imperious, whorish woman. Let's get the definition of the word imperious. Okay, because that's not a regular Negro word. Let's get there. He says, the work that the black woman does is the work of an imperious, whorish woman. Watch this. Now read that, read the definition of the word imperious. The definition of the word imperious, an adjective, mm -hmm. arrogant and domineering. You see that? Arrogant and domineering. So the Mosa God says the black woman, she's, she's an arrogant, whorish woman. Meaning she's aggressive, she's aggressive in the whoredom that she takes she take part in. She's aggressive in the whoredom that she commits. She's aggressive in being a whore. She's aggressive in being a prostitute, but no sex work. No, that's prostitution. She's aggressive in killing her own kids through abortion. She's aggressive in, in what? In disrespecting the black man. She's aggressive in not wanting to take care of her kids. If she doesn't, she gets, she's been given license to kill. She's aggressive in taking those philosophies and implementing them. You see that thing? She's aggressive. She's how can be a lesbian? The government will fund it. I'm going to show you that thing. That's why the law says, read the verse again, verse 30, so we understand what the Mosa is saying right here. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 30. Mm -hmm. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God? See, Wait. thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious Polish woman. The work of an imperious, what is the work? Prostitution, abortion. You see that thing? Prostituting your own kids and being given license to do so. You see that thing right there? So the Lord is saying her work to be of being a whore is, as, is the work of an imperious, meaning an arrogant and domineering whorish woman. Meaning when the black woman, when she, she takes on the evil, she will exceed all, all bounds of normals. She goes overboard. You understand? Look at, look at that sister, Zoto Abantu. That's an example of an imperious whorish woman, Zoto Abandu. She's making hundreds of thousands by shaking a bum on social media, by showing her private parts on social media. She's getting money. She's getting a lot of money for doing that. And she goes to radio shows and they commend her for what? For being a whore. They say, listen, you making your money, girl. You understand? It doesn't matter. It's your body. You do you. Nobody gonna judge you. Do you? Read the verse again. He says, what, the work of a what? The work of an imperious whorish woman. The work of an imperious whorish woman. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 30 verse 20. I'm gonna give an example of the work of an imperious whorish woman. This is what she does. And an imperious whorish woman is a shameless woman. You know, she's got no shame. She will not cover her own shame because she's got what? She's got enablers. Who is the enabler? The government. You understand? These private organizations that fund the black woman being a whore. Yes. Read it. Proverbs 30 verse 20. Okay. 
the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verses 20. Come on. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Mm -hmm. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. That's the work of an imperious whorish woman. It says, she eateth and wipeth her mouth. What is she eating? This is a metaphor for the woman performing oral sex. You understand? Sleeping with multiple men. It says, she eats, she wipeth her mouth. Meaning she wipes her mouth. You understand? She cleans up. She said, I've done no wickedness. Meaning, yes, I'm a whore, but I'm weak. This is my job. You understand? Don't judge me. I'm providing for my family. How come you the only race of people that the black woman in, 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 our, in, in all the women of the world, the black woman is the number one that likes to say, no, the reason why I'm, I'm, a, I'm a prostitute is because, you know, I'm struggling. I cannot get a job because they, because they love being prostitutes. They enjoy that whorish lifestyle. There's many jobs that you can get, especially the black women with this BEE, no, no, black women empowerment. They can get any type of job they want. Why do they have to choose being a prostitute? Because they love doing that because that's what God says. Is that the black woman, when she goes into wickedness, especially when it comes to fornication and sexual sins and filthiness, it says she does the work of an imperious, whorish woman. She goes beyond. She goes overboard with that. Okay? Read the verse again, verse 20. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 20. Such mm -hmm. is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. That's why the black woman is no shame that she can sex a man. You understand? She falls pregnant again. And guess what? She will abort the baby or she will give birth to the baby and take the baby and sit. The, the baby will stay with grandma. The grandmother will sit with the baby and the black woman will come back to Jobek and continue to Horsha here in Jobek. And she keeps doing it over and over. No shame whatsoever. You understand? That's why he says she will what? She will eat and wipe her mouth and said, I've done no wickedness. I didn't do anything wrong. I don't see anything wrong with this. She cheats and says, no, but you know, uh, you know, you know, sex with you is not good. This whole time you're not telling the brother. Because when you watch these uh, shows, the Jola Nine Nine, you hear a lot of that. I saw this one where the black woman was caught by the best friend, was caught by the boyfriend because the best friend decided to have a deal with the with the boyfriend to say, "Listen, I want you to take the the the, the my girlfriend and seduce her into sleeping with you." And guess what? She agreed while the boyfriend was standing there. When the, boyfriend, the, when the boyfriend showed up, she didn't know what to say. And guess who she blamed? She blamed the boyfriend. He says, it's his fault this happened. I've done no wickedness. She's got the accountability of a child. That's the mindset of our sisters. We try to elevate them by teaching them the laws of God, by they see us as our enemies. They see us as their enemies because that's how the white man has conditioned the black man to look at us. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 26, verse 8. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 8. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus of 26, verse 8. Mm -hmm. A drunken woman and a gather abroad causes great anger. And she will not cover her own shame. Read the verse again. Read that verse again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 8. A drunken mm -hmm. woman and a gadda abroad causeth great anger, and she will not cover her own shame. I'm sorry, read the verse again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 8. A drunken hey. woman and a gadda abroad causeth great anger, mm -hmm. and she will not cover her own shame. So you hear what the Bible is saying? It says a drunken woman and a getter abroad, meaning what? The woman that is drunk, this goes into a woman that is a drunk, but this also goes into what goes into philosophies. You understand? A woman that is drunk with philosophies 
and get her about when she got a big mouth is that she causes great anger. You understand? And she said she will not cover her own shame. Because guess what? What you want to understand is that as when if you notice during the 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 the, the, the 60s. When the black woman was given was given um, an opportunity to support the white woman in feminism in the feminist movement, she she gets guess what she did? She started to look down on the what on the black man. And when she did that, she caused great anger to the black man. And the black the white man was okay with that. You understand? She caused that's why now when the black woman opened her mouth, the black man that is fully awake that is in this Bible. That is, it causes great anger because the black men understand what the Bible is saying and he understands the type of spirit that woman is rolling in. And she can, he cannot stand that type of sister. You understand? That's why it says she causes great anger and will not cover her shame because who's giving a license to be shameless? The white man is doing it. The white man does that thing. Okay? Now read Sirach 26 verse 25. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Read but it again. She that... Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Read the verse again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 25. Mm -hmm. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. A shameless woman will be counted as a dog. Now, listen. Remember, it says she will not cover her own shame. A shameless woman will be counted as a dog because when they do, they say no. We want we want decriminalization of sex work. That's a shameless woman who is a dog, because this shameless woman, guess what she is? She's a female dog. What is a female dog? A female dog is a bee. That's a female dog. The Mosaic God says a shameless woman is like that female dog. She will not cover her own shame because she's been given license to be a female dog and to bring the characteristics of a female dog, of what the female dog does in her own community to destroy the young girls that come behind it. That's what's going on today. And that's what we saw when we were at camp. When we are teaching these two young girls about what? We're teaching them to what? To close their legs, to be righteous young women, to listen to their fathers and mothers, to respect their parents and not to have boyfriends, to focus on school, you understand? Not to be dealing with men. Here comes the older black woman. Here comes this black ashy demon. She's tried, she tries to stop the way. You know, she was, I cast her the hell out with the Bible, of course. Her head was ripped off with the Bible. We had to now go on to, into beast mode, you understand? To show that black woman, who says, sis, you are an older sister, you have no shame. We're teaching these young girls to listen. This is what you must do. Honor your father and your mother. You cannot be out here gallivanting the streets because guess what? Little Joel, Kimu Joel of hell and all that. You fall pregnant. Now you're supposed to go to school. What are you going to do? You're going to commit an abortion. Or you're going to be a child that has a child now. So we're trying to prevent that in our community. Here comes the older black woman. She opens a big black mouth. You understand? Because she will not cover her shame. She caused great anger, the Lord says. Go back to Sarah 26, verse 8 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 8. A drunken woman and a cat are abroad causes great mm -hmm. anger and she will not cover her own shame. You see, she, she caused a great anger. Because here we are building, she's trying to destroy. She will cause, she causes great anger. Now read 26, 25 again. I'm going to show you how deep this shameless woman goes. Really? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 25. Mm -hmm. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Read. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. A shameless woman that will not cover her shame, the one that will eat and wipe her mouth and say, I've done no wickedness, that's a shameless dog right there. The law says a shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Let's get some examples. Give me two. Deuteronomy 23, verse 17 and 18. This is an example of a woman, a shameless woman, that will be is, is the same as a female dog. Watch this. We know what a female dog is, okay? Read that for me. Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. 
the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Go ahead. There shall be no hope of the daughters of Israel. Mm -hmm. But Sodomites of the sons of Israel. So the Bible says, this is the law. It says, there shall be no hope of the daughters of Israel. Because if there's a hope among us, in many one, in, of our sisters, that's a shame. But because the white man is given the black woman license to be a shameless female dog, guess what? They will break this law right here. They will break this law that says there shall be no hope of the daughters of Israel. Because the black women, they are the daughters of Israel. The most high God, that's against the law. That's against our culture. That's against our heritage. That's against our cultural values because the Bible is our culture. Okay, read on. Verse 18. Watch this. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a hope mm -hmm. or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. Stop right there. The Bible says thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog. What is a hired whore? The hired whore is the girlfriend. The hired whore is the prostitute. That's a price. That's the price dog. That is the priced female dog that is shameless. That's what the Bible is saying here. What is the Bible letting us know? The Bible is letting us know there's no difference between a girlfriend and a prostitute because both of them, they are what? They are hired whores and they are prized female dogs. That's what the Bible is saying. And it almost happened in the camp with one of the sisters. She almost became a hired whore or a prized female dog. That's why she, she that's why I had to rebuke her. I had to rebuke her behind about this thing because that was the mindset she's got. You understand? So we are trying to prevent this thing. Now, read that again, verse 18. Read it again for me. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 18. Read. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For any vow, meaning what? Don't, don't, don't make a vow, meaning what? Then what is the vow? I'm going to show you the vow. Give me the book of Leviticus 21. I'm going to show you the vow right here. Leviticus 21, uh, read verse 7. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 7. Go ahead. They shall not take a wife that is a whore. You, you see that thing? Because when you take a wife, you're making a vow that you want to grow old with this woman. The Bible says, don't take a wife that is a whore. That's why it says, thou shall not bring the hire of a whore, the price of a dog into the house of the Lord for the God for any vow. The vow regarding marriage. Don't take a wife that is a whore. Don't take the wife that is a prized female dog. The Lord said, don't do that. You understand? Read. Oh, profane, neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto his God. You see that thing? So you holy men, you cannot go out and look for, or look for a, a hired whore or a prized female dog in the world. The Lord says don't do that. You cannot go out and look for a sister outside the congregation and say, no, I, there's not enough women in the congregation, so I want to go out. No, no, no. The same goes for the sister because that's exactly that's what almost happened in this camp. Where a sister, she will ignore all the men in Israel that keep the laws. The elite men. The elite men that the Most High God is building up and setting up to be the greatest men on earth. The sister decided to hell with that. I want to go into the world. I want to find a Negro. I want to find a black Asian Negro that I want to have sex with. You understand? Well, that's what we're reading here. Go back to Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. I want you sisters to pay attention so that this mindset does not jump on you again. Read again. Deuteronomy 23, verse 18. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, verse 18. Read. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. Read. For even both these are abominations unto the Lord thy God. You see that thing? Because that's an abomination. A girlfriend is an abomination. A prostitute is an abomination because a girlfriend and a prostitute, there's no difference. They are all one and the same. 
It's just, it's just that the prostitute sleep with multiple men in a day. The girlfriend sleep with multiple men over a period of time. They are all the same. Because the prostitute wants you sleep. Before you sleep with her, she wants money now. Then you lay with her. The girlfriend, you take her out. You take her out to dinner. You take her out to the movies. You buy her a present. And after that, you sex the sister. But you don't have to marry her. So it's the same thing because what she's got a price. What is the price, McDonald's? Go and take me to the movies. I want to go to Stecky Nico. I want to go to uh, I want to go to Ocean Basket. Take me to stairs. That's the price for the coochie. That's the price right there. That's how that's how much she's worth. Amelia McDonald. That's how much she's worth. You understand? Bottle of hunters dry. Because that's what they drink now, these sisters. Una lion lad. Ngu tweka. That's what they drink now. Just buy a ngu tuya Heineken. She will drink that. And then guess what? She will lay with you. That's how low. And the sisters don't want to listen to their fathers. They hate their fathers, by the way. They disrespect them. They don't want to listen to anything that the fathers have to say. Because guess what? She's going to lay down the chablani go go bottle store. We lo mitalele le tibo si go 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 skanye. They are going to do X, Y, and Z. When she meets Tibozi, she speaks evil of her father. Hi, why is he papa? Kamara, why is he? Hey, or, or, or. You simple as hell, you damn sister. Why do you think the man has to go to the father to seek your hand in marriage? Because the father will be able to investigate and, and what? Investigate, number one. You understand? And scrutinize what type of man this is. But you, a lot of you sisters, you do, guess what? You want to go around your fathers to go and deal with the nigger because you know how your father is. Your father will tell you straight up, hey, listen, don't bring rubbish in my house. So sisters, what they do, they go around their fathers. They say, you know what? I'm itching down there. I want to go and I want that Negro to scratch my, to scratch my itch. Then you become a home. Then you become that prize female dog. And when we say these things, it's like now we have some kind of an, no, it's biblical. It's biblical, sister, what we're bringing out. And this is to protect you because there's niggas out there that don't give a damn about you. They'll sex you, they'll give you a baby. Guess what? Now you have to leave us. You have to go out there and deal with that nigga by yourself. You understand? So to, pre to, pro to prevent all that drama, guess what? Follow the law, apply the laws of the Most High God, and listen to what your fathers tell you to do. You understand? Now watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs. You know what? Hmm. Before we get that, right? Before we get that, I'm gonna play a video. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you really. Go back, go back to um Sarah 26, verse 25. I'm gonna show you something right now. You know, when I saw this video, really, I was like, what the hell? Watch this. Read that. So let's go on. Read Sarah 26, verse 25. Sarah 26, verse 25. Read that for me. So, John, why did you disconnect? Read that verse for me. Sarah 26, yes, verse 25. Apologies, sir. I struggled with the network a bit. Okay, that's fine. Read that. Sarah 26, verse 25. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 25. A Go shameless ahead. woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. Because a shamefaced sister, she will fear the Lord because she knows how she must conduct herself according to what the Bible says, as it is written. You understand? The reason why you see all these the sisters, they first of all, foremost, they hate men. They are mesendrists. Some sister was saying, you know, she's a generational mesendrist. Like that makes any difference. She hates men. That's why they are, they, they, they are anti, they are anti-patriarch. They hate men. They are, they are what? They say no. Alpha males are misogynists. No, they are misandrists because they hate men. So now these women that you see, they are 
They, they've got multiple babies, different fathers. They are prostituting themselves because now they are doing, doing they want the government to legalize them being whores and prostitutes. Guess what? These are the women that have daily issues. They've got, they've got, they are, they have daily issues in their lives. And because they don't want to listen to fathers or men, now they are being exploited by men because if they listen to their fathers, a father will be able to teach you about men. But because they think they know better and the government is giving them like the government is their father. You know, the government, the devil is their father. The white man is their father. So guess what? Now, the, and their father is not teaching them about men. So now they get exploited by men and the white woman is behind them saying, do it girl. But the white man is not doing that. I'm gonna show you that all, many of these organizations, when you see who's sitting on the board of directors, on you see the white woman, but she's not partaking in that. She's just running the organization. She's not participating in that. You find that she's even married, but she's running an organization of black women who are prostituting themselves and their children. Now watch this. I'm gonna show you the sisters, how vulnerable the sisters are and the things that the sister, these sisters, because they don't listen, these, these are the things they do. Watch this. I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something here. This video, I'm gonna show you this video right here. Now, this is a sister that he had, she had sex with this man. You understand? Now, you know what? Before we get there, give me Sirach 26, 23. Sirach 26, verse 23. Then I'm going to give some the examples book. with this. Read it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 23. Go ahead. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Mm -hmm. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So a wicked woman will be given as a gift to a wicked man. You see that thing? A wicked woman will be given as a portion to a wicked man. So a wicked woman, the reason why you see a lot of the times your sister says there's no good man and all we meet, we just meet all these bums and all that. That's because sister, you are a bum. Because you attract those bums. That's what the Bible is saying. You say main and ish. Because you ain't you 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 ain't ish, so you attract the same man that has the same level of attribute as you. Read again, verse twenty-three. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter twenty-six, verse twenty-three. Go ahead. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, mm -hmm. but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. But a godly woman will be given to him that feareth the Lord. So a godly woman will attract a godly man. A whorish woman will attract a nigger. A godly woman will attract a whoremonger that has no business in marrying you. She will, he will sex you, he will mistreat you, and guess what? Because the Lord says, you also are a simple sister. You down to give yourself to that type of man. Now watch this. Give me that in 1 Timothy 3. I'm going to show you that because the most that God will give if you, are a, you, have, you have a whorish mindset as a sister, you are you have a you, you you have a whorish mindset, you understand, and you don't want to listen to your fathers because you hate men, you hate instruction, you don't want to be told what to do. We're not genius. Here's what the Lord says He will send you. This is the type of man the Lord says, I'm gonna send your way. Give me that in first Timothy 3. First Timothy chapter 3. No, no, second Timothy, second Timothy 3, verse 2. Watch this. This is the type of man that the Lord will send to you as a sister if, if you are a wicked sister. Meaning what? You hate men. You just want to sleep around. When I was like queen, when you're going around just um, eating men's pockets, you go from one man to another because you just want to clean them dry. You want to clean, you want to eat their money. You want to live the lavish lifestyle. You understand? You'll be playing best friends against each other pouring yourself out among them and so forth, making one of them end up in jail or end up dead. The law says, because when you are a whorish woman, you will not cover your own shame. This is the type of man the Lord will send against you. Read it. 2 Timothy 3 verse 2. Watch this. 2 
Can Booker Timothy chapter 3 verse 2. Go ahead. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, mm -hmm. covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and holy. This is the type of man that the Lord said he will send you. A man that will be a lover of his own self. He only, gonna, he only cares about himself. He don't care about you. You understand? All he cares about is to sex you and leave you. That's all he cares about. When are you going to be thinking, oh, I'm getting myself a husband, but when are yourself, you're not in order. You dress like a man. You see that thing? You dress like a man. So that man will deal with you like a man because that's what men do. Wicked men, not men that are... Men. I'm not talking about brothers that keep the commandments. I'm talking about brothers that don't keep the commandments and they only after those type of sisters that have daily issues. These are the type of men you'll meet. Men that are lovers of their own self, that means they don't love you. They don't care about you. They will just use you and sex you and abuse you. Then it says, covetous, meaning they are covetous. They're only after big booty women. They're only after all these women that have daily issues that they just want to sex and drop. Then it says, boasters. They are all about the, you know, the high life. They are all about swag. He's all about himself. He's proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, meaning what? They don't respect their parents. That's why they deal with you like that. I'm thankful and holy. They don't give a damn about what this Bible says. Keep reading. Come on, verse 3. Without natural affection. You see that part right there? Without natural affection because why? Yes, he's sexing you, but he's sexing another girl somewhere else too. He's sexing another one somewhere else too. That's why Ludacris, he released a song called, he says, I've got holes in different area codes. Oh, yeah. He, this type of brother right here, he's got holes in different area codes. You're one of those holes. He says, without natural affection. Because you sexing these multiple women, you don't have natural affection. It's unnatural. That means you covetous. Read. Truth breakers. They will promise you the sun, moon, and stars. They'll promise you anything and everything. They'll take you to places that you hardly ever go. They'll buy you maybe, uh, I don't know, some shoes or some handbag. But they will sex you and sex you and sex you, but they'll never marry you. They'll promise you, no, you know, I want to be serious with you, but he never is never serious. His actions don't equal what he's saying. But you still stay there because why? You've got daily issues. I get you, you don't listen to your father. You don't listen to any man that comes with this Bible. Where now you think you know better. So this type of man is the type of man that the Lord says he will send your way. Okay? False accusers. He's going to be a liar. He will break the ninth, the ninth commandment. Come on. Incontinent. Incontinent meaning what? He don't give a damn about you. He does not have any compassion for you whatsoever. Read. Fierce. Meaning what? They're full of anger. Okay, go ahead. Despises of those that are good. Because in it despises of those that are good is who? It goes into your father because your father will be able to spot a Negro. He said, listen, you stay away from my daughter. You stay away from my daughter from this day, but I don't want to see you here. If I see you here, there's going to be problems. So those are, they despise those type of men. They disturb those type of fathers because they protect their children. Okay, go ahead. Traitors. Mm -hmm. Heady. High-minded. Lovers ahead. of pleasure more than lovers of God. They don't love the Mosa. Is that they are traitors, they are heady, they are high-minded, meaning they are proud. They are, all, they are all about themselves. That's why in verse 2 says, men shall be lovers of their own selves. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. What is the pleasure? The, the pleasure is to sex you and leave. The pleasure is to compliment you on your curves, your big boobs, your big bums, and your pretty face. Guess what? Those compliments are not going to get you uh, are not going to get you a husband. Because when I get you dress up in a way that attracts homangas, a homanga does not see a wife. A homanga sees a sex object. But the sisters don't get, they know better. Look what's going on with the sisters. They cannot deal with, with these men. So the only, you, you get a compliment, be, before you know it, she's already on her back in that man's house or in that man's mother's house. 
However it is, it says lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They will love to sex you, but they will never marry you. Because every, every woman, any woman can get a man, but very few can get a husband. Let me say that again. Every, any woman can get a man, but very few women will get a husband. You understand? So now read verse 6. I'm going to show you something. Read verse 6. Watch this. Second book of Timothy chapter 3 verse 6. Mm -hmm. For of the sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins. Mm -hmm. Laden, led away with diverse lusts. You see that this type of men, says, they creep into houses and lead captive silly women, meaning dumb women. A dumb woman who says sex work is, is work, is human dignity, and mm -mm, that's prostitution, sister. Sex work is prostitution because you are a silly woman. The Lord says you're going to attract these type of men that will creep into your house. They will lead, he says, they lead captive silly women, meaning what? They will lead you captive in your sins and in their sins because when I yourself, you are laden with sins. You understand? You are full of sins, lusts. You want your age to be scratched. He says, what? Led away with diverse lust. They're going to lead you away with diverse lust. Meaning the level of the lust that you had before he came, by the time he leaves, you're going to have more lusts in your spirit. You're going to have diverse type of lusts because this man deals with diverse type of women. So all them spirits of the women that he sexes, all those spirits are going to be in you. So if those women, they had diverse lusts, meaning lesbianism, they wanted to smoke, they smoked, they dealt with both men and women, you understand? They committed multiple abortions and whatnot. You guess what? You also, you're going to have the same type of spirits. Those type of spirits are going to be on you because spiritually, he will infect you. You will be a what? They, guess what they call? They are called um, a spiritually transmitted demon. You become that now because that warmonger man, he's going to do that to you. And that's the type of man that God says he will send your way. You don't listen to your fathers. I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you right now because I'm, pu I'm putting the spirit out there so that if you think of doing this demonic, be demonic, abominable act one more again, this is the type of man the Lord will send your way. Keep that in mind. Now, watch this. Now that we're on this, let me play the video. Watch this. I'm going to show you really how things are, what these guys have to go through. Watch this. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a play. There's a place where I think this sister right here, okay, she slept with this guy. Now, the guy is a spiritually transmitted demon. So now he's mistreating the sister. And look what the sister says. The okay. Okay. Nobody yeah. why, nobody, nobody why, come on. Okay, huh? it's fine. Just my phone. Let's see the book of payments. Uh -uh, babe, babe. Come on, come on. But babe, I was like, oh, so already. Let's mm -hmm. go home. Because I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, but I was here. I mean, we're all okay, friends. Can, can, we're all friends here. We're all friends. Can we not, can we not go there? Man? Come on. No, but me now. I had not a problem. But he's saying it's a lot of I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you. I'm coming at you. I'm the way he doesn't know, with the way I have power over him. Mina, his sperm is in my fucking vagina. I can go right now and call for rape, yeah. but I will not do that. You see that thing right there? You, you brothers, you heard what the sister said? Yes, sir. Mm. This yes, is sir. what the sister say. Let me rewind the tape, because some of you are sleeping up in here. Let's go back. The way he doesn't know with the way I have power over him. 
Me and his sperm is in my fucking vagina. I can go right now and call for rape. Yeah. But I will not do that. John, let's not do that. I will not. Yes, I will not do that. Let's not do that. I will no, not no. do Come that. Come on, Kaloko. I mean, we're friends. And he doesn't know that with how much power I have. You see that thing? So you have to ask yourself, who has given the black woman this power? Mm. The government has given the black woman this type of power. The white man is given the black woman this type of power because the government does not have money. The government is funded by Europe and America. So guess what? This type of rights that the black woman has, the white, the white man is the one that is given the black woman rights like this. This woman, she had consensual sex with this man, right? And now the spam of this brother is inside of her because she doesn't like the type of man she's dealing with because she didn't prove the brother now she's upset guess what happens now she says his spam is inside of me so that means i have power i can call for rape now and i can get him locked up and say he raped me you see that thing so imagine if this video wasn't recorded imagine if this video was not taped she could go to the police and the brother would be locked up and she said I was raped, but she had consensual sex. Let's get the law real quick. Get that into Tommy. Let's get the law. Because I'm going to show you really what's going on. Okay. You told me chapter 22. You told me 22. Uh, read verse. Let me see. Yes. Read verse 28. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 28. If a, man, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay but hold you know on her, and lie Jump with her. Jump up to verse 24. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Um, read verse 23. Read verse 23. Yes, sir. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 23. If a damsel mm -hmm. that is a virgin be betrothed unto her husband, and a man find her in the city, and lie with her. That's what's going on here. The sisters, obviously, she's not promised to no one. Okay. But at this, in this case, this man has met this dam, has met the damsel, he has met her, and met her in the city and lie with her. He had sex with the sister, like what we're seeing here. Go ahead. Then he shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city. And he shall stone them with stones that the, that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being the Stop being, right he says, because we cannot stone no one. We cannot stone anyone. We're under the new covenant now. Christ is the one that will bring the judgment. If it happens in the congregation when a man sleeps on a, with a, a brother sleeps, have sex with another with a sister in the in the truth, they, we have to kick them out. Either you get married immediately or you get the hell out. But here it says. Um, and that he says, he says what? And the damsel, because she cried not, meaning what? It was consensual. She agreed to have sex with this brother. Go ahead. Being in the city and the man, being in because... The city, being in the city, whether Kiko Josie, Kiko Pitori, wherever the case may be. Go ahead. Because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. You see, this is evil. Boyfriend and girlfriend is evil. So look at the judgment now, because now the sister's discovering the type of demon that he's, she's dealing with. He's also just discovered, well, the friend is videotaping this. He also just discovered, the friend just discovered what type of demon this woman is. She's a demon. You see that thing? demonic activity because look at the sister she was a demon from the beginning the brother also is a demon but we read in the scriptures that the sister will be attracted to a man like this the brother also will uh, will be attracted to a woman like this so both of them they are what they are exactly the same was him i can go right now and call for rape yeah. but i will not do that John, let's not do that i will not yes i will not do that let's not do that i will not do come that come on to i mean we're friends and he doesn't know that with how much power i have we're towards friends. him no, he, he wants to like 
Bisa mina ngis febe ngis oh okay you want to call me is febe I have you spend in my future and I can come from prep right now. Okay, uta ki yo prep na man. No 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 no. Uta wa abele bengi mina samina impuzi samanti mense la yonke to impuzi ngami impete ni impuzi uturais. Nah, so I just want you to see really what's going on here. The level of demon demonic activity that we're seeing here. But what I'm trying to show you here is that as a people, look at the sisters. That's a sister that has got daily issues. She's got daily issues, that sister. That sister has daily issues. Understand that thing. She's got daily issues. So, but you see how she's moving? She says, no, I was taking care of the brother and so forth. He was drunk and I was helping him to drink water so he can sober up and all that. Guess what? He says, men shall be lovers of their own self. Because that type of man that we're reading about in 2 Timothy, that's not a godly man. That's a nigger. That's a homemonger. You understand? That's a homemonger right there. Okay? So now, watch this. Um, give me the book of Proverbs 23 verse 27. Give me Proverbs 23 verse 27. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 27. Mm -hmm. For a law is a deep ditch. Wait. And a strange woman is a narrow pit. A whore is a deep ditch. So it's talking about that a whore is a deep ditch because she sleeps with multiple men. She wipes her mouth and says, no, I'm still good. You understand? Not realizing what like her men are abusing her cookie. So that's why the law says a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman a narrow pit. She's going to give you problems. That's what you just saw with the sister. Go ahead. She also lieth in wait as for a prey mm -hmm. and increase the transgressors among men. You see that? He says she also, she also lieth in wait as for a prey and increases the transgressors among men. Look at how that brother, she, he almost ended up in jail. Because the sister said, this man does not know the type of power I have over him. Because his sperm is in my vagina. So I can call for rape now and get him locked up for rape. That's why it says, it says, she also lieth in what? Read that part again. She also lieth in wait as for a prey. Mm -hmm. And increases the transgressors among men. She increases the transgressors among men. A lot of brothers are in jail today because of that type of a thing. Where a sister says he sleeps, she is the sister sleeps with this man, and he, she discovers oh, this man is no good. And guess what? She just says, No, he raped me. And they're not gonna ask questions, they will just take the side of the woman without any investigations whatsoever. So do you think that there's a lot of men that are in jail today and they were locked up for rape and they didn't do it? Yes, you better believe they are. You better believe there's, there's a lot of brothers that are in jail today because of a woman. Whether it's true, they were framed because the woman says, no, this, this man raped me and so forth when he did it. There's another case in Soweto um, I heard about where a, a, a woman, a mother, she had a daughter. This daughter, she told the daughter, say, listen, you are here you are, you don't have money, you are struggling, but you are sitting on a million dollars. That's what the, the mother told her, her own daughter. Then this daughter started to sleep around with older men's younger men. And this one day when this older man didn't want to give her money, she said, he raped me. And that man was locked up because the, the mother said, go to the police station and said, he raped you. I think after a year or two, the man, the, 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 the child could not take it. She had to call that man to come to the police station. She went to call the police from jail to say, listen, I want to give a statement. I actually, bear, I was lying and so forth. This man, um, she went to the police station and said, listen, he didn't rape me. I was told to say this. How many more cases do you think exist of that? Multiples. You understand? 
because of shameless daughters of Zion, the black women, because of what? Hordom. Because they've got daily issues. They don't listen to their fathers. We see it all the time. They don't listen to their fathers. You understand? Now watch this. Give me Sirach 26 verse 9. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 26 verse 9. The holy right. of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. He said, the horum of a woman may be known in her haughty looks. What is a haughty look? A haughty look, I'm going to show you what that is. It says, the horum of a woman may be known in her haughty looks. Give me Proverbs 7 verse 10. Let's, let's see the haughty look of a woman. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. Go ahead. And behold, they made him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle mm -hmm. the heart. And in a subtle of admitting, this woman is evil. And that's what you just saw on the video. That woman right there, the man was calling that sister Isfab, a B. So now they were reading, and you saw how the sisters dressed. That's a haughty look. That's a proud look. That's what we're reading here. The whoredom of a woman may be known in, is as what, behold, they made him a woman with the attire of an harlot, the attire of a whore, where you see a cleavage, we see a breast, this is all hanging out and all that. Yes, that's what we're reading here. The attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. What is the subtle of heart? Listen, this man has a, his sperm is in my vagina, so I can call the police and get him locked up for rape. That's the subtle of heart. You see that, brothers? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You brothers see yes, that? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so sir. now, watch this. Watch this thing. Um, keep reading. She is loud and stubborn. She is what? Her feet are like nothing. She is loud and stubborn. She is loud and she's stubborn. That's what you saw with the sister. The sister's loud and she's stubborn. The brother keep telling her, listen, no, let's not do that. But she says, yeah, I mean, I, I have power over him. I can do X, Y, and Z. She's loud and she's stubborn. Go ahead. Her feet abide not in the house. Because now she's what? She's playing the whore in her father's house. Right? Now is she, now is she without? Now in the streets and lieth in wait at every corner. He says, now is she without? She's without a man. Because they don't. Then these type of sisters don't get married. But they will get men to sex them though. He says, now in the streets, because she's looking for what? She's looking for young men void of understanding. He says, and lieth in wait at every corner to what? To catch men. Because she's also hunting. She's hunting for a prey to increase the transgressors among men. To frame them for rape. You understand? So that's what the Lord is telling us right there. So go back to Sarah 26, verse 9. Okay, come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 9. The whole of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. Now let's deal with that part. It says, the whole of a woman, we dealt with that. The haughty looks, we dealt with that. It says what? Haughty looks and eyelids. Let's read that. Eyelids, eyelids. That goes into what? Her lashes and so forth. Now, we, we went over this before. Now I'm going to show it anyway. Watch this. Now read that. Haughty looks and eyelids. Read that part right there. Cambrella. Where are you In reading from? 1882. Reading the definition of Cambrella from ifani.co. Uh-huh. Cambrella. No, read, in the, 18... read, the, read, read the top part. Read the top part. What does it say? The heading. I finally understand why so many why so many beaches with fake eyelashes. You say that? No, no, but we're reading what we're reading. Why are you afraid to say this stuff? It's written right there. We didn't write this. It's written right there. Keep reading. Cambrella. In 18... 82, London prostitutes Gerda Porid Gerda invented 
elongated eyelashes or umbrellas to block semen from getting in work in working girls' eyes that are worn today as common fashion. You see that? Cambrellas. So these sisters with long lashes, these are called cambrellas. To block what? To block the semen from going into their eyes. Because what are these sisters doing? It says working girls. You see, that's, 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 another, politically term, that's another politically correct term. Working girl or sex work. No, no, no. It's prostitution according to the Bible. Is prostitution according to the Bible? Because our sisters, they like to use, because who's actually coming up with these terms? It's not the black woman. The black woman is not coming with the term sex work. No, the white man is the one that's defining these terms to, to what? To rock the black woman to sleep. To rock the black woman to sleep to being a prostitute. You see that thing? That's why it says, um, working girls, sex work. No, but all that, but Bible calls it, the Bible says it's prostitution. Hold on. You understand? That's why it says working girls right there. Okay. Go back to Sarah 26 verse 9. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 9. The whole name of a woman will be known in a haughty looks and eyelids. Mm -hmm. Eyelids, umbrellas, long eyelashes to block the semen because she deals with multiple men. They do all sorts of uh, evil concupiscence, sexual evil desires to her. You understand? Now that's why she has to now put on umbrellas. Mm. Read verse 10. Sarah 26, verse 10 now. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 10. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly. Lest mm -hmm. she abuse herself through over much liberty. The Bible says, if your daughter is shameless, it says, keep her in straightly. Now watch this. It says, if your daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly. Now watch this. Watch this. Give me that thing. Go back to Sarah 26, verse 25 again. Remember, it says, if your daughter be shameless, how? Read that. Sarah 26, 25. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 25. A shameless yes. woman shall be counted as a dog. Stop right there. But this she is how her daughter, wait, this is how a daughter becomes shameless. I need you to pay attention. This is how a daughter, uh, a daughter becomes shameless. It says, a shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Because in Deuteronomy 23, verse 18, teaches us that a shameless dog is a what is a hired woe, which is a girlfriend or a prostitute, which is one and the same. That's how a daughter becomes shameless because she sleeps around. That's a shameless woman. That's a shameless daughter. You understand? The law says keep her in straightly. What does that mean, keep her in straightly? Give me second Esther 721. Keep her in straightly. Second Esther chapter 7, verse 21. Read that. Second book of Esther, chapter 7, verse 21. Go ahead. For God hath given straight commandment. To such as came, uh -huh. what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. You see that thing? The straight commandment is this, this, this when it says keep it in straightly, meaning what? Teach the commandments of the Lord. The commandments of God will teach you as a father what to teach your daughter, meaning to keep a peace, to give her chores. You understand? That's why it says straight commandments to avoid punishment, meaning what? Judgment from the Most High God. Because judgment from the Most High God will come from the world where you will meet a wicked Negro who's going to sex you and abuse you and do so, all sorts of evil things to you. Why? Because you do not want to follow the straight commandments. You understand? As an example, give me the book of Sirach 724. Sirach 7 verse 24. It says, keep it in straightly, meaning what? Teach her God's commandments. Discipline her with God's laws. Read that. Sirach 7.24. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7, verse 24. Come on. Hast thou daughters? Have a care of their body, and show mm -hmm. not thyself cheerful toward them. You see that thing? Is that, do you have daughters? Do you have daughters? Yes, we have daughters. Okay. It says, as thou daughters have a care of their body, meaning take care of their body. Meaning what? How to dress, 
what they must dress. Your job as a father is to make sure that your daughters, they dress modestly, according to the scriptures. They don't put on pants. You understand? Give me that in Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Because a woman is not supposed to dress like her father. He's supposed to put a beautiful long dress as the Bible describes. Okay? We're coming back here. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. He says, have a care of their body. One of, that, one, of, one of the examples of having a care of their body is what? They must know how to dress and what to dress. We which God. Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. Read it. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. Mm -hmm. The woman to wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So a woman is not supposed to dress like a man. She cannot be putting on pants. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Because both of them, if they are cross-dressing, God says they are abomination unto him. They are disgusting in the sight of God. So they must what? They must dress accordingly. It's the father's job to make sure that that takes place. As a father, you must take care of your daughter, and uh, meaning in terms of how they dress also. Your job is you're responsible for that how she must dress up. She must not put on her pants. She must not put on leggings. She must not put in mini skirts and bum shorts and low cut tops where her cleavage is showing. She must put on a long, beautiful dress that is not see-through, that is not tight fitting. You understand? Because her body is belong what? Her body will only be seen by her husband when she gets married, not no boyfriend. You understand? And uh, before she gets, she gets married, She's her father's property. Let me say that again, because in the media, they make it seem like, uh, no, that's, no, no, that's a biblical term. You are your father's possession if you're not married. You are your father's possession if you're not married. Then when you get married, you become uh, your husband's possession. Because your husband, to say, because when you get married, you take on your, your husband's name. And in order for him, for him to solidify that, you know, you are his wife, Guess what? There must be a marriage certificate that states that sister such and such is a wife to brother such and such, according in court. So that means that's a legal document. You change your, your last name, you take on his name. Guess what? There's a document that binds you to that man. So he's, you are his possession. He's going to take care of you. You see that thing? We're not talking about in terms of, no, she's my slave and all of that. That's garbage. Those are just trigger words to confuse the black woman. Because when the black woman hears this word, no, you are, you are your father's possession is like, that means your father owns you. Yeah, he does. That means your husband owns you. Yeah, he does. In terms of what? You are his wife. He takes a care of you. He's got documents that says that that's my wife right there. And I love it like I love myself. And I'm going to take care of, I'll protect our nature, I'll teach her God's laws. That's what it means. Okay, I'm not talking about the negative connotation that the media has attached when it comes, has attached to submission when it comes to the black woman. Okay, now let's go back. Go back to Sarah 7, verse, 20, verse 24 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7, verse 24. Great. Has thou daughters, have a care of their body and show mm. not thyself cheerful toward them. Meaning what? Your daughter is not your friend. So you sisters, no, I'm not your friend. I'm your father. Same for you goes for you brothers. I'm not your friend. I'm your, I'm your father. Understand that. So, but we dealing with the, with the sisters here. It says, and show not yourself cheerful towards them. You have a care of their body. Meaning what? Your job is to make sure that they dress accordingly. They conduct themselves accordingly as righteous women in Israel. Now watch this. It says, don't show yourself cheerful towards them. Keep them busy. Give them chores. Give me the book of, um, give me Genesis 24 verse 11. Yeah, I'm going to give an example of our, of, our, of our righteous foremother, Rebecca. You understand? She was an idol. She was not an idol foremother. Okay, read that. Genesis 24, verse 11. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 24, verses 11. Mm -hmm. And he made and he made his camels to kneel down without the city, 
by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. Even the time when women go out to draw water because the sisters in the land, they were busy, they were kept busy. You understand? You understand? They would go out to draw water and so forth for their household because they were cooking, they were cleaning, they were washing, they were feeding their kids, and so on and so forth. So they were busy, they were not idle. So jump down to verse, read verse 13 now, come on. This is when Abraham seven went to look for our forefather Isaac's wife, read. The book of Genesis chapter 24 verse 13. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. You see that thing, the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water, read. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink and shall say, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for the servant Isaac, for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. You see what he's saying right there? He says, let down thy picture, I pray thee. Because guess what? She came to draw water. She was busy. She was an idol, our former. You understand? Now give me the book of Ruth, chapter 2, verse 7. Ruth, chapter 2, verse 7. Watch this. The book of Ruth, chapter 2, verse 7. Go ahead. And she said, I pray you, let me clean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Mm -hmm. So she came and so she came and hath continued evening, even from the morning until now, that she tarried a little in the house. So this is Ruth. It says she what? She said, Let me let me clean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Meaning, what? let me work. You understand? Because it was harvest season. So it says, let me work. Let me go in and clean. You understand? After the reapers among the sheaves. Let me get busy. You understand? That's the mindset that she had. And the reason why she had this mindset was because of who? Was because of our foremother, Naomi, an Israelite woman who taught her how to what? How to be a, a virtuous woman. You understand? So a virtuous woman is not idle. A virtuous woman is always busy taking care of the household, making sure that everything is in order. Because the day she gets married, she's going to be a good wife. She'll take care of the house. She'll take care of the kids. She'll be able to what? To make sure that her house is in order. Because that's her office. It doesn't matter if she's a CEO in some company. That don't mean nothing if you cannot set your house in order. You are a bum, sister, if you cannot do that. Watch this. Jump down to verse 15 now. Come on. The book of Ruth, chapter 2, verse 15. Wait. And when she was risen up to clean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, I had a clean even among the sheaves and reproach her not. You see what? It says, let her clean even among the sheaves and don't reproach her for doing this. Keep, keep going. Read. Verse 16. Come on. And let, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may clean them and rebuke her not. You see that thing? Keep going. It says, let her work. Let her do the work. Read. Come on. So she cleaned in the field until even. Stop right there. And remember, it says, hold on. It says she cleaned, she cleaned in the field until evening. In verse 7, she says she started what time? Read verse 7 again. The book of Ruth chapter 2, verse 7. And she said, mm -hmm. I pray you, let me clean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and had continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. He says, she, what, she continued even from the morning until now. What is the now? Read verse uh, 17 again. She started from the morning in the field. You understand? Until what time? Read that. Verse 17 again. The book of Ruth chapter 2 verse 17. So she cleaned in the field until even. Until evening. So from morning till evening, she was busy. She didn't have time to talk to some boy. The hell is this? She didn't have time for none of that stuff. That's what we're reading here says. She cleaned in the field until evening. 
Go ahead. And beat out that she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. Hey, come on. And she took it up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned, and she brought forth and gave it to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. You, know, you, see what, you see what he's saying? It says, after she gleaned from morning till evening, she took up what she gleaned and she went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned, saw that she had what she had gleaned. Meaning her mother-in-law was able to see her good works. That's why it says she saw that. You understand? And she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. Meaning what? She gave her what she needed. Meaning what was enough for her after she had been when she came back to the city. You understand? Now jump down to verse 23. Come on. The book of Ruth chapter 2 verse 23. No, no. Hold on. Let me see. Yes, read verse 23. Yes, sir. The book of Ruth chapter 2 verse 23. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the even of barley harvest. Of barley unto harvest. The end, unto the end of, bar, of barley harvest. Read. Uh, excuse me. The book of Ruth chapter 2 verse 23. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law. So she gleaned during the barley unto the end of the barley harvest and of the wheat harvest, and she dwelt with her mother-in-law. So this woman was not lazy. She wasn't a lazy. She was not a lazy woman. You understand? Because she was learning from our foremother Naomi how to be a proper wife. Now watch this, chapter three, verse eleven. Watch this. Listen to what our foremother Naomi says now. Watch this. The book of Ruth, chapter three, verse eleven. And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest. For all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. Now, I what? That thou art a virtuous woman. It says, all the women of my people know. All the, it says, it says what? Um, it says, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman is not lazy. She's not a bum. I want you sisters to understand that so you can elevate your thinking. Okay. Now, um, give me, go back to Sarah now. Sarah chapter 26. Okay, go back to Sarah 26. Sarah chapter 26 and verse, read verse 11 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 11. No, no, verse 10, verse 10. I'm sorry, verse 10. Excuse me, sir. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 10. Mm -hmm. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. He says, if your daughter is shameless, we read what it means to be shameless. He says, keep her in straightly. That's what we read. I give an examples of what it means to keep her in state, I mean, keep her busy, prepare her to be a wife, okay? It says, let she abuse herself through over much liberty, okay? So the most High God is saying, keep her in state because if you don't do that, she is going to abuse herself. It's not an if or maybe, it's a fact. She's definitely going to do it. That's why it says, let she abuse herself through over much liberty. So that's why you sisters, I want you sisters to be busy. You must, you must not be idle. Because when you are idle, you are going to abuse yourself with that liberty that you've got. The most is letting you know what you are going to do. You understand? You saw the example of what's happening in this, what happened in this camp. So pay attention, especially you sisters. This well is not going to run dry. Understand that? Because I want this thing to sink in the head. Give me that in, um, because guess what? If the sister is not kept in state, she will abuse herself. So that's why it's the job of a father to make sure that the sister does not abuse herself by doing what? By keeping her in state, keep her in the house. And while she's in the house, she's doing work. If you got a job, you have to travel and all that, 
guess what? Make sure that you are, everything is professional. Keep in touch. Make sure that everything is in order. You understand? Always, if anything goes on, let us know so we know what's going on. Okay? Why? Because we want to make sure that you don't fall into this category right here, where you abuse yourself. And you know, the way you're going to abuse yourself, men are going to abuse you. You understand? In multiple different ways, they will abuse you. Okay? Now, what's this? Now, read verse... Hold on a second. It says, let she abuse herself through over much liberty. The only way the sister will abuse herself, the reason why you see today, these multiple, the, all the our sisters, they say, no, I want to be a sex worker. I want license to be a prostitute. I can abort the baby. I can kill the baby. I can be a lesbian and so forth. Is because the father is not around. And if the father is there, she does not listen to her father. She listens to her mother. And the mother goes against the father when the father corrects the daughter. That's what's going on in the black community today, by the way, in the Israelite community. So the only reason why you see sisters abusing themselves over through much liberty is because they don't have fathers in their lives. They've got daily issues. You understand? That's why they will abuse themselves. Because if the father is around, here's what the father will do. Give me Sarah 42 verse 9. The father will do this right here to make sure that their daughter does not abuse herself through over much liberty. Okay, read that. Sarah 42 verse 9. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 42 verse 9. Read. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. That's the father's and job. The father's job is to watch for the daughter. The father's job is to take care of his daughter. You understand? That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the job of a father right there. He waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth. When no man is there, the father's job is working hard to make sure that the daughter gets the best life. So that when the man says, I want to marry your daughter, you have to take over from where I left off. Don't take my daughter and my daughter now is struggling because when you are a bum. Oh no. Mm -mm. Keep reading. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 42, verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and Wait. the care for her taketh away sleep. Stop right there. Remember what we read in says, when has thou daughters, is there, has thou daughter, have a care of their body. That part right there. It says, and the care for your daughter, take away the father's sleep, because the father is the one that makes sure that the house is safe, the daughters are safe, you understand? They are provided for, they are protected, they are safe and secure. You understand? They have everything that they need. That's the job of a father. You understand? That's why it says, they care for her, take care of the way sleep, because you worried. You worried if there's a nigger talking to your daughter without your permission. He, and for sure, he does not want to marry your daughter. He just wants to sex your daughter. You understand? That's my worry as a father. That's why when I get wind of evil going on, I will curse you the hell out. Why? Because if I don't get wind of it, I don't catch it, guess what's going to happen? You are going to be abused by these men. All they care about is not marriage. They care about their what They just want to sex you. That's it. Because a real man will go to the father and say, I want to take your daughter's hand in marriage. I will tell you what, how much my daughter's worth. Your job is to go back and say, okay, let me do my calculations. I'm not sitting properly. You're not ready yet. You need to focus. You're not ready to come back to me yet. That's the point. That's why he says they care for her, take care of the way sleep. Because when a nigga talks to you, you know how many, so that means as a father, you are worried about how many rods they, they want to approach your daughter. That's the mindset, by the way. I'm just keeping it real. You understand? That's, that's how you have to think as a father. Okay, keep reading. Go ahead. And the care for her, Take it away, sleep. When Wait. she's young, let she when pass away. When she's young, meaning young enough to be instructed to make sure you prepare her to be a wife. Wait. Let she pass away the flower of her age. Uh -huh. And being married, lest she should be hated. Your job is to make sure that she does not want, she does not reach menopause. 
many she must get married before she reaches that that type that 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 that, that process in her age because now she's old your job is to make sure that she doesn't reach that you understand menopause that there or the flower of the age is talking about that it's not talking about your daughter now she gets a menstrual no it's not talking about this it's talking about menopause the most i is saying your job is to make because sure, guess your job would you preparing your daughter to be take to be what to be a wife before she reaches that menopause where now it's going to be what is going to be difficult for her to have kids and so forth because women have a biological clock men don't women do okay go ahead In a virginity, the she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. Stop right there. So this part right there is what we read in Surah 26 when it says, let she abuse herself through over much liberty. The only reason why she will abuse herself is because of what? When she's defiled, because the father is not around. So this one, this sister right here, she's got daily issues. So are all these sex workers, they have daily issues, all of them. It doesn't matter how old they are. All of them got daily issues. So this behavior that you see, now I want to be a prostitute, I want to be a sex worker, is just rebellion. Throwing tantrums because why? Because your father was not around. That's the point. And, when he, and if he was around, you just rebelled against your father. So now your rebellion is playing the whole in Israel. So that's why he says, in her virginity, lest she should be defiled, because your job as a father is to make sure that your daughter's virginity is not defiled. Your, your daughter is not defiled. You keep her busy. You make sure you keep her busy. So that from sun up to sun down, she's busy. When the sun goes down, she's exhausted, she passes out. That's the point. You understand? Because if she doesn't, if she's too idle, she's going to want and gotten with child in her father's house, she'll bring shame to her father's house, which is the pandemic that is spreading in the black community where kids are having kids why because there's no father figure or there's no father and if there is the father has no power because the black woman is sitting on top of that black man right in a virginity that she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house and having an husband that she should misbehave herself and when she's married she should be barren. Because when she gets married and she was never humbled by a man in terms of her correction and instruction and nature, guess what? When she gets married, she's going to be hated because she's not going to know how to deal with a man because she never dealt with a man before because if a daughter's first love is a father. Let me repeat myself in case I started. A daughter's first love is her father. Understand that? A daughter's first love is her father. Because she knows how to love a man by loving her father. So that by the time she gets married, it's going to be easy for her to do what? To submit herself to that man because she's been submitting herself to her father. I hope you sisters understand that thing. Okay. Now, watch this. Go back to Zara 26 now. Okay, Zara 26. Read verse 12 for me. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, verse 12. Come on. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he hath found a fountain mm -hmm. and drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down and open a quiver against every arrow. Because if there's 10, because if when if the father is not around, guess what's going to happen? She's going to bring shame to her father's house. You understand? She's going to be gotten with child in her father's house. And her name is going to be polluted because she's playing the whole with many lovers. So here it says she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. Why? Because she's too idle. She's too idle. Now she, this is how she will abuse herself. Is that she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. Remember, a thirsty traveler is somebody that has been traveling for kilometers. He's thirsty. When, guess what? Because he's thirsty, he's looking for a tap of water for him to quench his thirst. It says a daughter that is idle, you understand? She's not kept busy in terms of chores, 
like we read in, in the book of Ruth, like we read in Genesis 24, she's going to do what? She's going to be like a thirsty traveler. She will drink of every water near her, meaning what? She'll sleep with any brother that gives her a compliment, any brother that um, gives her attention, every brother that will, uh, that will bribe her with presents and so forth, she will open her legs for that brother. And that's what you are seeing today. These sisters that say, you know, they are sex workers, how do they get sex? I get they get, they get money. Then they are sexed by these men. That's what we're reading here. She will what? She will open her, she will, she'll drink of every water near her. And by every hedge will she sit down, meaning that's every penis, and open a quiver, meaning her legs, her vagina, against every arrow. That's what these sex workers are doing. Opening their legs to every man that gives them money for sex. That's what we're reading here. And because of that, this is the problem that is now covered all is because of what these sisters are doing. Sirach 42 verse 11. Because of this, uh, this evil act of prostitution that is now being legalized, because the criminalization of sex work is legalization of prostitution, that will cover the whole nation of Israel, the nation of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read it. Sirach 42 verse 11. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Excuse me, say I lost my bearings. Sirach 42 verse 11. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, verses 11. Mm -hmm. Keep a show watch over a shameless daughter. Mm -hmm. Let she let she make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies and a byword in the city and a reproach among the people and make thee ashamed before the multitude. You see what the Bible is saying? If you have a shameless daughter, the Lord says, keep a show watch over because she's shameless. So many what? Keep her in what? Keep her in straightly. That's what it means to keep a show watch. Let she make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies. Meaning what? The other nations. The reason why you see the black woman now she's a laughing stock is because the black woman now she has become a shameless daughter of Zion. That's why now the black woman now she's got a shameless image. Read again verse, verse 11. He says what? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 42, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter. Let she may give thee a laughing stock to thine enemies and a proverb in the city and a reproach among the people and Stop make right thee. It says, keep a sure watch over a shameless daughter lest she make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies. How do they do that? Social media, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. You understand? Um, only fan. There's multiple uh, platforms now where these sisters they are being they are bought, <clears throat> excuse me they are prostituting themselves. There's online platforms now. This online um, this internet is giving our sisters license for them to prostitute themselves because now that's where they meet men. That's where they're able to hook up with men. They are doing it online now, but now because they are they want to legalize this thing. Is going to be all over on the streets. They can set up on any corner. Guess what? You don't. You cannot tell them nothing. We went back to Sodom and Gomorrah. Understand that it says our enemies is what YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, one all these social media platforms. That we don't own them. They are owned by our enemies, especially Amalek. When if you investigate all these, uh, who Mark Zuckerberg, he's Amalek. He's Jewish. He's Esau who stole our name. Our name is our land of Jerusalem. Okay? It says, and a byword in the city. That's why today the black woman says, I'm a bad bee. You understand? I'm a thought. You understand? The, only, the black woman is the only one that says stuff like that. I'm independent. You are independently a prostitute. And you are independently being abused by these nations through their platforms, using black men to abuse you. You understand to buy sex from you. And these nations are the ones that are creating the environment for the black woman to do what? To prostitute herself. The reason why I'm getting one of our sisters is because they are the ones that will end up with all these kids, 
that will end up having to queue Kosasa. They're going to be the ones that are going to end up having to raise up this case by themselves. But they don't listen because they trust the white man. They don't trust the most High God. They don't trust the prophets of the Lord getting themselves right, keeping God's commandments. It says, get your mind right so you can find a godly man who keeps the laws of God and he will marry you and take care of you and your children. They don't want that. The black woman would rather be a baby mama than be a wife. DJ Zink is an example. Okay? So what we're reading here, the Lord is saying, a byword in the city and a reproach among the people, meaning Israel, and make thee, make thee, make thee ashamed before the multitude. Because the community will bring, well, the community back then, the nation of Israel, we had leaders in the community to deal with, to judge matters. Now, who's judging matters? The court system. Who's majority in the court system? White men who are judges. The children of those Buddhists that used to oppress us during apartheid. You can't make it up yet. You understand? Now watch this. Hmm. Give me the book of Sarah 15, verse 20. Sarah 15, verse 20. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15, verses 20. Go ahead. He hath commanded to no man to do wickedly, neither hath he given any man license to sin. The most high God never gave any of us, both men and women, license to break his laws. But society is giving the black woman license to commit abortion, to kill our babies. You understand? It's given the black woman license to be a lesbian. As he is now is about to give the black woman license to be a prostitute. Literally. The most high God never gave us those laws for whether the man or woman to break his laws. But society, the government, the white man is doing that. He's given the black woman to destroy her own people, to bring shame to her own nation. And the black women don't see that because they are listening to these clueless black Negroes, the presidents and the politicians, which are clueless. They don't know fuck all. And they are the ones that are destroying the black community, by the way. Understand that. Now watch this. Give me Jeremiah. Jeremiah 23, 14. Jeremiah is chapter 23, verse 14. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 14. Go ahead. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. Mm -hmm. They commit adultery and walk in lies. Right. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that Stop none right does. They do what? They strengthen also the hands of evildoers. They strengthen the hands of evildoers. They give our sisters license to be prostitutes. Decriminalization of sex workers, that's what they are doing. They are giving the black woman license to be a whore. That's what we're reading. It says they strengthen also the hands of evildoers. They give them strength because they are passing laws now in the country to legalize what? Prostitution. That's what it means to strengthen the hand of evildoers. Who's the evildoers in this case? The black woman who wants to what? Who wants to have sex and get paid for it. You see that? Ray, come on. Come on, Zolder John. Yes, sir. The book of Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 14. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. And they strengthen also the hand of the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants they offer as Gomorrah. You see that thing? So they're, because they strengthen the hands of evildoers, who's the evildoers in this context? Black women who wants license to be prostitutes and they want to multiply their whoredoms. How? By bringing their daughters into this business too. It says what? It says that none doth return from his wickedness. Because they pass laws for them to be whores and to be prostitutes, they are not going to return from their wickedness. It says they are all of them unto me as Sodom 
and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. And you know, we all know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. What? Fire and brimstone came down from heaven. In these last days, there's going to be nuclear war on this earth. These black women that don't repent from this, they all gonna burn when the missiles hit, when the Lord returns. Our prayers that our sisters repent and return from their wicked ways. You understand? Watch this. Now, I'm gonna share this. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, let me share my screen now. Let's deal with this thing. Okay, let me share my screen. I wanted to arrive to this point. Okay, now read that. Reading from IOL. Sex workers happy that talks on this decriminalization have finally begun. So the decriminalization of sex work has, start, has finally started now in South Africa to discuss this thing. Read, Cape Town. Cape Town. Organizations supporting sex workers have expressed <laughs> happiness that years after lobbying the government, they are pleased for the decriminalization of sex work will be initiated. You see that thing? It says years after lobbying the government. You know what it means to lobby the government? You know what a lobbyist is? A lobbyist is somebody that is organizations or, or private, private organizations or private individuals that give the government officials money to pass laws into office. That's what it means to lobby the government. Go ahead. This after the government initiated consultations with various interest groups, hoping to advance the debate. Mm. Go ahead. Justice and Constitutional Development Department Minister John Jeffrey how the closed door meeting. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see. Um, so, John, it looks like you are okay. you are getting exhausted. Uh, who can read? So, uh, so, Samuel, can you read for us? I need you to read. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me share my screen. We appreciate you, Shoulder John. Okay, read that. Start from the part where it says this after the government. Read that. This after the government initiated consultations with various interest groups hoping to advance the debate. Okay. Justice and Constitutional Development Deputy Minister John Jeffrey held a closed door meeting in Cape Town last week with representatives of the pro-decriminalization sex work sector. So now it's even a sector. It's a sector. So they had a closed door meeting to discuss this thing those that are pro-decriminalization sex work. And you can see, John Jeffrey, that's not a black man, that's a white man. The white man is always behind evil when it has to play the black community. Keep reading, the issue. The issue of decriminalization may be a contested one, but is also one that needs to be debated and a decision taken. As the issue has been one which has been delayed for far too long, so now it's time for them to do this evil demonic thing. Keep reading, go ahead. Among the groups he spoke on Thursday last week was the Sex Workers Education and Advocacy Task Force, SWEAT. Mm, they, they, it's even a task force. Keep reading, we wanna go into this thing. Keep going. Spokesperson, spokesperson Megan Lessing said the talks focused on why sex work should be decriminalized, and also how the process should be should proceed. Meg, Megan Lessing is not a, is not an Israelite. She's Elam. She's Elam. She's not Israel. She's Elam. You understand? It's all these heathens that are pushing the black women to do evil, because you don't see you don't see Elamites protesting on the street saying we want to we want legal we we want to we want license to be sex workers. You don't see that. You don't see white women saying we want license to have to be sex workers. It's always the black woman in the forefront with evil. Go ahead. Everybody has a stake in this conversation and wants to be part of the debate. It's not everybody. Keep going. 
However, it must be emphasized that the sex workers are the only ones affected by the decision and should be given big consideration when the consultation process begins. You see that part right there? You see what she's saying? Everybody has a stake in this conversation, but then she comes back and says what? However, it must be emphasized that the sex workers are the only ones affected by the decision whether to decriminalize or not to decriminalize. So what is she saying? She's letting you know, this thing is only affecting you black women and your community. That's what she's saying right there. Keep going. Other participants at the meeting included Kosatu you can't and the commission. Kosatu, hmm? Kosatu is part of this. Go ahead. And the commission for gender equality. CGE. Mm. You see, this is the fourth wave of feminism. Gender equality, CGE, this forms part of the fourth wave of feminism, which goes into what? The alphabet community, LGBTQYZ. Okay, go ahead. Jeffrey intends to have a series of similar meetings with other stakeholders who are in favor of the so-called Nordic model, pioneered mm. in Sweden in 1999. Mm. Where was it pioneered? Pioneered in Sweden in 1999. Sweden. This was pioneered in Sweden. This has nothing to do with us. White men, they are the ones that came up with this. And South Africa wants to implement. Remember what we read in the scriptures is they are playing the whole. So even these clueless black, so-called black leaders, they are also playing the whole with these nations implementing their programs into the country to destroy their own people. Keep reading, go ahead. And adopted by a growing number of countries around the world. You see that thing? Like it's, that's what we read in First Maccabees. You understand? <clears throat> Excuse me. That everyone should leave his laws and all the heathens agreed according to the commandment of the king. First Maccabees 141. Keep going, go ahead. Including Norway. Iceland, mm -hmm. Northern Ireland, Canada, France, Ireland, and Israel. You see, and what? And Israel. And this is not talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. This is talking about white people that took our land and our culture and our name. They call themselves Jewish, but they are white people. These are not Israelites. That's why they call them Israelis, Jewish people. White people that stole our name and our culture. So all of these people that you see here, Norway, Iceland, Northern Ireland, Canada, France, Ireland, and Israel, these are all white people. These are all Caucasians here. You understand? Now read. When they met the deputy minister, human rights advocacy NGO, embrace dignity, will argue the case for why South Africa should not legalize the sex trade but rather adopt a demand focus legal framework, the Nordic model, which they call the equality model. You're still saying the same thing, framing mischief by a law. Don't, don't fall for the okie doke. Okay, go ahead. The equality model exempts mm. those who sell sex from criminal liability and affords mm. them services while penalizing the buyers of sexual acts including brothel owners and pimps who they see as the pillars of the sex trade. Hold on a second. It says the equality model exempts those who sell sex for from criminal liability and affords them services while penalizing the buyers of sexual acts. So what they are doing is that, mm, give me Psalms 94 verse 20 again. Mm, this white man is the devil. He is making it seem like, no, we're going to come up with a legal model in order for us to regulate sex work. But they are not going against it. They are, they are supporting it, but they are using legal garbage, legal garbage in inverted commas to manage this whole thing. Read that in Psalms 94 verse 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 94 verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Mm -hmm. which frameth mischief by law. You see that thing? 
they frame mischief by a law. So they are completely about this. Because you see what they're trying to do? This, this, this equity model, you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to put uh, brothel owners and pimps out of business. I'm gonna give an example, right? Look at how they put the, 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 meter, cap, the meter cap business out of business. When they introduced Uber, when Uber was introduced, the attempt was to take the taxi business out of business. That didn't work. But they, they did manage to, to, to take, to affect the, the meter cap business. They, 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 they affected that business because now nobody's using meter cabs anymore. They are using Uber or Taxi Fire, whatever they, whatever they are. People are using that now. So that's the whole point of doing that. The same way when they bring shop right, pick and pay and spa into our community, they are trying to destroy the businesses of black people that have supermarkets, that have spaza shops, and you understand, general dealers and all that, they are, they are destroying those businesses. And who's helping them? Ishmael. Arabs are helping the white men to destroy any form of business that we, the people in our community, we are trying to push our own businesses they are putting us out of business. That's what this equity model is trying to do. They wanted to put pimps and brothel owners out of business. You see that thing? That's what's going on here. You know what they are trying to do? For instance, look at it like this. There's going to be a body that will manage the, 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 the prostitution business. Just like there's a business, there's a, there's a body that is governing the Uber business is the same thing they want to do here. You brothers understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, all praise. Now, keep reading. Jeffrey will also meet with religious organizations and, mm. tradi and traditional leaders, as well as with relevant government departments to ascertain the implications of changing the legislative, the legislative framework and the public. You, you see, now they want to change the public perception of, of the people regarding this thing because it's a taboo. We don't do that. But the reason why the, the black women, they are pushing this is because they are, these are feminists. Do you understand? These are feminists that are pushing the feminist movement. They want to bring it into, into the community to destroy their own people. I have to repeat this over and over so you see the agenda of the white men to use the black woman to destroy her own people and her own children. So that the black woman is at odds with her black man. Because as we are rising up, we see the evils that the black woman is doing and the white man is using her to do it. We see that. Now because our eyes are opened, we can see what the Lord is telling us. So they're going to re lead with religious organizations that goes into the world, the world and the National Council of Churches which is the Roman Catholic crack anyway, traditional leaders that goes into the witch doctors and all that, because that's the politically accepted term now, traditional leaders. No, witch doctors, as well as relevant government departments that goes into the ANC, you know, all these political organizations, Boma Lema and all that, to ascertain the implications of changing the legislative framework and the public. Hmm, watch this, there's more. Oh, you thought there was no, no, there's more. Remember, they say the organization is called Sweat, right? There's an organization called Sweat. Let's deal with them. I'm going to show you this organization. This organization is like the Black Lives Matter. They just, they are, they are just an evil organization. Now read that. This is sweat.org.zeri. Okay. We're reading about what is this organization really about? Read that. Sweat has a 20-year sweat has a 20-year history in organizing sex workers, advocating for and delivering services to South African sex workers. Mm, you see that? So they formed they formed a body to be able to manage and to help our sisters to hold themselves out. You understand? Really? We have facilitated birth of two movements, a pan-African alliance of sex workers. African Sex Worker Alliance and okay, a national... Okay. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Is this a Pan-African Alliance of Sex Workers? 
What does it mean, Pan African? Mm. Let's get the definition. I'm going to show you how deep this thing goes. Okay. Read that. The definition of Pan Africanism, reading from Wikipedia.org. Uh -huh. Pan Africanism is a worldwide movement that aims to encourage and strengthen bonds of, solid of solidarity between all indigenous and diaspora ethnic groups of African descent. So when it says indigenous and diaspora ethnic groups of African descent, it's talking about Israelites. Okay, go ahead. Based on a common goal dating back to the Atlantic slave trade. Stop right there. So Pan-Africanism is actually based on a common goal that goes back to the transatlantic slave trade. Keep going. Go ahead. The movement extends beyond continental Africans with a substantial support base among the African diaspora in the Americas and Europe. Meaning what? Scattered Israelites, like we read in James 1 and 1. So Pan-Africanism is about the 12 tribes of Israel, the gathering together of the 12 tribes of Israel. You see that thing right there? That's what Pan-Africanism is about. The gathering together of the 12 tribes of Israel. So when you say you're a Pan-Africanist, you're saying you're about your people. The gathering together of your people that are scattered abroad through slavery, colonization, and forced migration. So what the hell does the sex workers have to do with Pan-Africanism? What the hell does that have to do with anything? I'm trying to show you that sweat, the sweat movement, they are used to infiltrate the, the you know, they, they, are, they, are, they are used this type of organization to infiltrate black communities to find out who's actually trying to rise up. They use this type of movement to what? To monitor and be watchdogs. And who's the watchdog? The black woman is the watchdog of the black community to see which man is rising up against all the evils that the black woman is pushing, being used by the white man. That's what these organizations are about. You understand? So don't think it's just about, no, we just want to have sex. Mm -mm, it's beyond that. Okay, read. Pan-Africanism can be said to have its origins in the struggles of the African people against enslavement and colonization. You see that thing? So what does sex work have to do with this? Nothing. Sex work, there's a Pan-African Sex Work Alliance. What does sex workers have to do with Pan-Africanism? Absolutely nothing. Letting you know this is an agenda. There's an agenda behind this. So I want you men to be awake. Ray. And this struggle may be traced back to the first resistance on slave ships. When our forefathers were rebelling against the white men, meaning what? They were rebelling against Amalek, Jewish people that sold us into slavery. They sold our fathers and mothers to the North, Central, and South America. They are the ones that insured the ships to sell us. They are the ones that were manning those, those ships. They were the captains of those ships. They are the ones that insured the ships that were transporting us. The white people in our land calling themselves Jewish, they sold us into slavery. Rain. Rebellions and suicides. Though the constant plantation and colonial uprisings and the black and the back to Africa movements of the 19th century. In the 1800s, Rain. Based on the belief that unity is vital to economic, social, and political progress and aims to unify and uplift people of African descent. Meaning Israelite. Give me that in uh, Zephaniah 2 verse 1. Because this what the, this Pan-Africanism is about this, what we're reading in Zephaniah 2 verse 1. Watch this. Read that. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. Before the decree bring forth before the day no, no, passes. No. Verse 1. Zephaniah 2, verse 1. Excuse me, sir. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation of desire. You see what God is commanding us? That's what Pan Africanism is about. 
the gathering together of the 12 tribes of Israel. The diaspora, those are our brothers and sisters that were scattered during the transatlantic slave trade, colonization, forced migration in 70 AD when they kicked us out of Jerusalem. The six, the you know, the 700 AD, you understand? Where the Arabs were starting to sell us seventh century, which is 652 AD, when the Arabs started to sell us together with uh, the Hamites, you understand, to sell us to China and India. The gathering together of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what Pan-Africanism is about. You understand? It says unity is vital to economic, social, and political progress and aims to unify and uplift people of African descent. The only way we are going to unite is through this Bible. Then economically, socially, we are going to be all right. The Lord will take care of us. We're going to rule the earth. Okay? Now read that. Read that last paragraph. Let's just deal with that part. Read that. At its core, Pan-Africanism is a belief that African people, both on the continent and in the diaspora, share not merely a common history, but a common destiny. Meaning what? We're going to receive the kingdom. We're going to rule the earth. Read. Pan-Africanist intellectual, cultural, and political movements tend to view all Africans and descendants of Africans as belonging to a single race. Israelites, we are Jews. We are the children of Israel. Read. And or sharing cultural unity. Watch this. Go ahead. The Bible. Pan-Africanism posits a sense of a shared historical fate for Africans in America, uh -huh. West, West Indies, Go ahead. and on the continent. Meaning at the African continent, that took a, that, that's making reference to the Bantus. Go ahead. Itself centered on the Atlantic trade in slaves, African slavery, and European imperialism. All of these things, everything that we just read in this paragraph right here is part of the cases of Deuteronomy 28. Understand that thing. So you have to ask yourself, well, what the hell does the sweat movement, the South African sex workers movement have to do with, um, with Pan-Africanism? Ab absolutely nothing. Letting you know there's an agenda behind this thing. You understand? Now, I want you to read that part right there. A Pan-African one? A Pan-African Alliance of Sex Workers. African Sex Worker Alliance. And a national movement of sex workers called Sisong. Mm. Keep going. ASWA is now an independent organization based in Kenya. And Sisonke is moving towards its own independence in South Africa. You see what they are doing? Now they are setting up all these organizations to monitor the rise of the 12 tribes of Israel. And remember who's going to rise up first, the men. The black man is going to pick up this Bible and hear the prophets on the sea teaching, pick up this Bible and get himself right. Who's going to be the white man's watchdog? The black woman. Because we are going to denounce Proceed, legalize prostitution because we want our sisters to return back to this Bible. Who's going to fight us? The black woman is going to fight us who don't want to repent. I want you men to see what's going on here. You understand? Our vision. Let's read that. Our vision is a South Africa where people who choose to sell sex are able to enjoy freedom, rights, and human dignity. Hold on a second. Human dignity when you are where a prostitute in, must want to enjoy human dignity. What kind of dignity do you get out of selling your body as a sex object? Where, where is the dignity in that? Give me that in Hebrews 13 verse 4. You see this white man is the devil. Okay. And you've got black ashy devils also that are supporting him. Hebrews 13 verse 4. Read what you got. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Great. Marriage is honorable in all, uh -huh. and the bed and defiled. Come on. But homongers and adulterers, God will judge. You see that? Marriage is honorable, not prostitution. 
not sex work, because that's the politically correct term. No, we're going to use the biblically correct term, which is whoredom and prostitution, fornication. The Bible says marriage is honorable, not prostitution. So the black woman is saying, because the white man is really speaking through her, it says so in South Africa where people who choose to sex, to sell sex are able to enjoy freedom, meaning freedom to sleep with whoever you want, how many men you want to sleep with, rise to sex whoever you want, no marriage, no nothing, and human dignity. Where's the human dignity where God says marriage is honorable and whoremongers and adulterers God will judge, meaning whoredom and whorish behavior, the Lord will judge them with diseases, you understand? Abortions, no marriage, broken family structure, single parent households, baby mamas and baby daddies. That's the judgment when we don't honor marriage, where the black woman is listening to the serpent again. You understand? The black woman is listening to the serpent again, just like she did during the time of Adam. She's doing it again today to dishonor the, the marriage because when she listened to the white man, during the time of Aram, she, she did what? She dishonored marriage. She didn't honor the marriage that just she had with our forefather Aram. She didn't do that. Now, read that. We're going to read this, the smaller prince because that's where the juicy stuff is. Read. Sweat uses an evidence-informed human rights-based approach to address mm. sex workers' health. There is no health when you are dealing with multiple men. Spiritually, you are polluted with the spirit of these men that you sleep with. That means you have hundreds of thousands of different demons that are sitting on you because you have sex with these men. That's why it says, men shall leave father and mother and they too shall be one flesh. Now, let's read that. First Corinthians 6. Because when these sisters, they sleep with all these multiple men, this is what happens in the spirit world. Let's bring it out in the scriptures. Let's see what God says. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Okay. First book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 15. Go ahead. You know what? It's kind of verse 13. Watch this. First book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 13. Go ahead. Meat for the belly, mm -hmm. and the belly for meat. But God shall destroy both it and them. The Lord will destroy the meat, the, do the Lord will destroy the belly too. Go ahead. Now the body is not for fornication. You see that thing? But sweat says they must, the body is used for fornication. God says your body is not to be used for fornication in sexual sense. You understand? Being given license to have sex. Because that's what this decriminalization of sex work means. License to break God's laws, to commit adultery. They have been given license to commit adultery, fornication, uncleanness, evil sexual concupiscence. The body is not for fornication. Go ahead, but for what? But for the Lord. Uh -huh. For the most high. And the Lord for the body. And the Lord is for the body because the most high God gave you that body and he gave you the Bible to take care of it. Read verse 15 now. Come on. First book of Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that your bodies are the, are the members of Christ? Really? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? Mm -hmm. God forbid. Meaning no. You cannot take the members of Christ, which is your body, and make them the members of an harlot. God says no, you shall not. You may, you cannot. It's against his laws. So it says, don't make, don't take your body and join your body to a prostitute. The Lord says, don't do that. It's against the commandments of the Mosai. Why the Lord says, don't do that? Next verse. Go ahead. What? Know you not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? Go ahead. For two, said he, shall be one flesh. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, if you are joined to a prostitute, meaning... You as a man, you sleep with a prostitute. God says you are one body. You are going to be one with that prostitute. So there's the, the multiple men that that woman sleeps with, all those spirits, they are going to be on you as well. That's what the Lord is saying. It says, for two saith he shall be one flesh. 
you're going to be one flesh with a prostitute. So now imagine the prostitute sleeps with multiple men on a daily basis. By the time the week is done, she slept with more than 50, if not more. Guess what? That means that, means that all those 50, 40, 30 men that she sleeps with in a week, when at the end of the week you sleep with that prostitute, that means you, you, all the, those 30 men, their spirits are on you as the man that you sleep with a prostitute. Not only that, but those 30 men, they've got more than one demon on him. Guess what? All those spirits will sit on the sister. So what do you have? You have a spiritual bomb. You have a spiritual and a demonic bomb. That's what you've got. That's why when you, know, you notice that the black, the, the black man sleeps with a woman, he you know, sleeps with a prostitute, all of a sudden, his spirit is different. He says, no, you know, I never used to like this thing. Why all of a sudden I, like, I, I just want to smoke? What the hell is going on? It's because you're dealing with all these, those women and they deal with all these multiple men. So all their spirits are on you. That's why the Lord says, the two shall be one flesh. It's not just sexual. No, it's spiritual too. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay? So we need to understand that. There's no such thing as a sex worker's health. There's no health in you being a prostitute. There's nothing healthy about it. Okay? Read. We embrace the concept of wellness, which requires the active participation of sex workers in becoming aware of and making choices toward a healthy and fulfilling life. There's nothing healthy and fulfilling about being a prostitute. God is letting you know. The Mosa is letting you know right there that he's against his laws. So that means already you are in the wrong. The Lord will judge you. You are living a whorish lifestyle. The Lord says you must repent. Okay, go ahead. Wellness goes beyond merely the absence of disease. It includes physical, mental, and social well-being. None of these things are true. The white man is just deceiving the black woman. It's as wellness goes beyond merely the absence of disease. No, the sister has diseases. And that's number one. Two, spiritually, they are polluted. You understand? So mentally, physically, and socially, they are not okay. But the white man will, has convinced the black woman to say, you are okay. They are not. Okay? Read. Sweat is currently finalizing its new strategic plan, mm. which consolidates its programs into two areas of focus. Let's see what those two areas of focus are. Read. Sex worker empowerment and enabling environment program. Sweep. Mm. Go ahead. The objective of which is to create an enabling environment for service delivery through the mobilization of sex workers to demand services. You see that part right there? Remember what we, I was mentioning, I said in France, you've got all these mobile, uh, mobile uh, vehicles moving around where you can actually, they say, no, you can stop it and you can have sex. That's what we're reading here. It says, uh, it says, the objective of which is to create an enabling environment for service delivery. What does that mean, service delivery? That means, it says, how is the service going to be delivered? Through the mobilization of sex workers to demand services, meaning sex workers on demand. So don't be confused with the word. They like to, they like to put words in a way that we can, no, we can see beyond what they are saying. Service delivery is going to be done through what? Sex workers on demand. So they are letting you know they're going to create platforms where there's going to be sex workers on demand. Just like during when they were legalizing abortion in South Africa, there was a legal abortion on demand. They are doing the same thing here. Meaning what? You see how people, they be ordering pizza. They can use, uh, what do they call it? Uber Eats. You've got, you're going to have Uber Eats for what? For prostitutes, where you can just order it online. They get delivered to your house. I want you brothers to see what's going on here. 
Sex workers on demand, it means prostitutes on demand. That's what it means. Okay? Let's see the next one. This is two pillars, right? Two areas of focus. This is the next one. Read. Advocacy and law reform, reform program, ALRP. So advocacy and law reform program. Go ahead. The objective of which is to reduce violence, improve access to rights, and to enable sex workers to actively claim their rights through the decriminal, decriminalization of sex work and policy reform. So what they are doing is that they are just throwing things out there. It says the objective, which is to reduce violence. So prostitution reduces violence in the black community. Prostitution will reduce violence in the black community. Hell no. Let me show you what will reduce violence in the black community. It's not prostitution. Prostitution will increase violence in our community. Okay, I'm going to show you that. Give me that in Jose. Prostitution is not going to reduce violence in our community. Okay. The laws of God will reduce violence in our community. Give me that in Hosea 4 and 1. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Go ahead. Because there is no truth, mm -hmm. no mercy, Wait. no knowledge of God in the land. So the reason why the Most High God says, I've got a problem with you Israelites, because there is no truth. What is the truth? Give me that in Psalms 119 verse 142 real quick. Let's see what is the truth that does not exist in the black community. The book of Psalms chapter 119 verse 142. Go ahead. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Yeah. And thy law is the truth. Thy law is the what? Thy law is the truth. So the laws of God, that's the truth. So go back to Jose. God's law is the truth, right? The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth. There is no law. Meaning the laws of God are not being applied in our community. God's commandments. The, one of those commandments is what? Do, thou shall not commit adultery. Which is what decriminalization of sex workers goes into. They go against that law. So the government, the white man has convinced the black woman to say, sex work, prostitution in our community will reduce violence. No, that's not what the Bible says. Read no mercy, uh -huh. no knowledge of God in the land. The knowledge of God is the laws of God. God says in our communities, there's no law, there's no mercy, there's no commandments that are being taught in the community. That's why the Lord says he's got a problem with us, the children of Israel. Next verse, watch this. Look at the consequences of lack of God's commandments. Read. By swearing and lying and mm -hmm. killing, and, and, what? and killing violence, killing black on black crime. It says by swearing the, and lying and killing, read. And stealing mm -hmm. and committing adultery. That's it right there. Killing, stealing, and committing adultery, prostitution, and hoarding in the black community. The reason why these things are taking place is not because there's what? The, Lord, the Moses is letting you know that part of the reason why there is no truth, there is no um, part of the reason why there is there's there's lying, there's killing, there's stealing, there's adultery being committed, meaning whoredom and prostitution, is because the laws of God are not being taught in our community. So now the white man has managed to convince the black woman that prostitution in the black community will reduce violence. What the hell is this? How does that make any sense? It doesn't make any sense. The Lord is letting you know the reason why there's whoredom in the community is because there's no, there's lack of laws. The commandments of God are not being taught. So now the white man is convinced the black woman said, no, commit adultery, it will reduce violence in the community. How? 
How is that going to reduce violence? Because where you have prostitution, you've got drugs. Where you've got drugs, you've got gangs. Where you've got gangs, you've got black on black crime, you've got killing. You brothers understand this? Yes, sir. Keep going. They break out and blood touches blood. They break out, meaning they fight, they go to war with each other and blood touches blood. We fight amongst each other. This, these are the consequences of not keeping God's commandments. But the white man has managed to convince these dumb black women who agree with the, what the white man is doing to our people. Read that. Therefore, shall the land mourn. No, 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 no. No, no, no. They, they go back to, our, to the article. Sweep. Sweep works directly. Read that. Sweep works directly with sex workers. They are families and direct service providers. Mm. While ALRP simultaneously works at a community, state, and societal level. When it says community, that means that they're going to implement prostitution and houses where prostitution is going to take place. Remember what we read in Ezekiel is as you're going to build an eminent place. This, this movement called sweat, decriminalization of sex work, that means especially in our communities because that's where these things are going to take place. They are going to set up brothels now. They're going to set up sex places where they, everybody in the community knows that they're that's where you can go and buy sex. They're going to set up those things in the community. I'm telling you, that's what's going to come down. That's what's going to happen. That thing is going to cause so much. That's, it's, going to, it's going to increase. Sex trafficking is going to go high. Drug abuse and drug use is going to go high. Prostitution, obviously, because that's the key. You understand? And what? Teenage pregnancy is going to be even through the roof. HIV and sexually transmitted diseases are going to go high. Abortions are going to go, go skyrocket if they do this. Okay, that's why it says they're going to do it at a community, state, and societal level. That all, that's called way to mean they're going to implement it in the Black community, in the nation of Israel. And the Black woman is responsible for doing that. I want the Black woman to know what, she's responsible for destroying her own nation. Ray. Information generated by work at these levels provides scaffolding for the achievement of our goals and vision. You see what the goal is? Their goal is to implement sex, is to implement prostitution in our community. That's their goal and vision. Their goal and vision is to legalize prostitution. Because think about it. They legalized abortion, right? The number one people that are committing their abortions on this earth is who? Black women. That was legalized. They legalized what? They legalized same-sex relation. The number one people that are partaking in that is who? Black women and black men. Now they want to legalize prostitution. Who do you think is going to participate in this thing the most? And that's the biggest one, by the way. Sex, that's the biggest one. Once you legalize that, Drugs are going to what? They're going to plague the community. Chaos is going to sprung up in the community. That's their goal and vision. And the, I'm going to show you the people that have founded this movement. You're going to be shocked. Okay. Keep going. For example, our national helpline provides direct support to sex workers, but also notes trends in issues being experienced by sex workers that informed advocacy, which in turn directs service provision. You, meaning what? They wanna, they wanna what? provide more services for prostitution because they keep saying sex workers. No, these are prostitutes. Esau, the white man and the president of South Africa, the ANC government, they are legalizing, they are legalizing prostitution which will plummet our community that is already destroyed. We have a lot of work to do, brothers. I'm just showing you the work we are up against. Okay, go ahead. Both programs employ sex workers in action and leadership. 
You can't make this stuff up. You just cannot. You can't. You can't. You can't make this ish up. Okay? Now, I want you to read that part now. Remember, by the way, there's on, on the 3rd of March, let's see. Oh, yeah. On the 3rd of March, which will be on a Thursday, there's the International Sex Workers' Rights Day. You can't make it up here. Read that part right there. Read that. 3rd March. International Sex Worker Rights Day. Now read that. International Sex Workers Rights Day is commemorated globally on March 3rd every year to recognize sex workers' rights. Meaning what? License to be a prostitute. Read. This year, Sisonke National Sex Workers Movement of South Africa, together with partners, the Sex Workers Education and Advocacy Task Force, SWET, Asijigi Coalition, and early organizations will honor this day across all provinces through various activities with a common goal, a renewed call to government to decriminalize sex work. So this thing, these, mo these movements that, you, that we're reading about here, they want to come together to go to every province to promote prostitution to young girls that means they're going to come with pamphlets they're going to come with t-shirts they're going to come with all manner of what hampers and all of that to entice young girls that are still in primary school and high school to to teach them that it's okay to be a what to be a prostitute you can't make it up here that's what's coming that's why it says they are seen is as a sorum and like unto gomorrah go ahead in 2018 the Commission for Gender Equality's investigative report into the gross violations of sex workers' rights that was subsequently tabled in Parliament concludes that criminalization of sex work is contrary to international law and unfairly infringes upon the fundamental rights enshrined in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. Because that I told you, this as uh, this. This, this thing that we're reading about here, sex work, which is prostitution, is part of the fourth wave of feminism. Because in the fourth wave of femi feminism, you've got what? You've got, you have a right to your body, you can be anything you want. If you want to be female when you are male, you can be. So the fourth wave of feminism is what? The LGBT community is um, legalizing of what? Legalizing of prostitution, which will only mostly... 80 to 90 percent will affect our communities because that's their goal and vision to destroy their own people okay because that's what we need when it says uh is contrary to international law and unfairly infringes upon the fundamental rights and insane infringed in the bill of rights and constitution so that's what they are doing they are pushing that to our people and guess who is in the forefront the black women once this thing goes legal, you really want to see what's going to happen in the communities. I'm telling you, you're going to see. All these sex trafficking, they're going to go high. I'm telling you, you want to see it. Great. Sisonke National Coordinator and Sisonke Founder, Koli Butelez, agrees mm -hmm. and says that criminalization of sex work started with the Immorality Act of 1927 which was then amended in 1957 and renamed as the, as the Sexual Offenses Act. You see that thing? It's, so it says this thing started in 1927. So it was called the Immorality, Immorality Act of 1927. What immorality, because a, a more Im, what Immorality Act are they talking about? Get Exodus 20 verse 14. This is the Immorality Act. They get it from here. Read that. Book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 14. Read. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's the immorality act, according to God. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, go ahead. That's it on that. Now go back. This act further. So thou shalt not commit adultery. Let me show you what, it, what they say it does. You, listen, you are going to be shocked by the things that were going to be coming out. I know this class is going longer, but just bear with me. Okay, read. This act further oppresses sex workers 
promoting human rights. Whoa, 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 hold on. This act, meaning the Immorality Act of 1927, which is called, which was amended in 1957 and renamed to Sexual Offenses Act, it says this act, it says it oppresses prostitutes. So thou shalt not commit adultery oppresses prostitutes. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Because that's what they're talking about when it says the immorality act. The, the moral laws, you find them in the Bible. And what there's, thou shalt not commit adultery is part of the moral law. So thou shall, when we teach thou shalt not commit adultery, don't be a boyfriend and a girlfriend, get married. That means it's, so that's oppression in the mind of the black woman. I want you men to understand what we're dealing with here. The war that we're up against. Okay, keep going. This act further oppresses sex workers, promoting human rights violations and abuse. Whoa, Not too whoa, much. whoa, whoa, hold on. What? So read Exodus 20 verse 12 verse 14 again. And we're going to read what is written in the article. Mm. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 14. Go ahead. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit, commit adultery. This says it does what? This act, read that part, read it from there. This act further oppresses sex workers, mm. promoting human rights violations and abuse. So hold on. So thou shalt not commit adultery oppresses prostitutes. It promotes human rights violation and it promotes abuse. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Marriage being honorable promotes, it promotes the oppression of prostitutes. It promotes the human rights violations and abuse. Because thou shalt not commit adultery. When you honor this law, you honor marriage. And you, you, you what? You don't subscribe to prostitution. Listen. This kingdom is ruled by Satan, brothers. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. This kingdom is ruled by Satan, the white man. I want you to see how deep this rabbit, this rabbit hole goes. Go ahead. Not to mention how it has fueled stigmatization and marginalization of sex workers. You see that thing? So you telling me that us keeping God's commandments, it promotes violence. That's why they, are, they were saying, they, in their vision, their, their mission statement, they said, no, sex workers will reduce abuse and violence in our community. How? How is prostitution going to reduce violence in our community? Somebody, please make me that make, make that make sense to me. It doesn't make any damn sense. But that's what they're pushing. Who's the watchdog for this? Watch this. You're not going to be shocked either. Let's see. Hmm. Let me show you who's supporting this thing. Let's go to our board, right? The board of the founders. You see that thing? Look at them. Black women. They Israelite women. The Israelite women, they are the ones that are on the board. They are not funded. They are funded by white men, the white men. And I'm going to show you the funders and the partners. But the, the people that you want to be interested in is the found the, the funders, the people that are funding this organization. You've got Heidi uh, in Cuba. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. You see, listen. You see where, 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 she, where she studied? It says, Heidi is a South African artist and speculative thinker who embodies the erotic, that means the sexual stuff, you understand, fornication, as a power against violence, toxicity, and erasure. How is... Listen, look at how, listen. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my God, man. Okay, you know what? That's okay. Let me calm down. 
you see the black women? Let's scroll up. You see that thing right there? The white woman. Okay. The black woman. Looking like a white woman. Another black woman. You see, Dr. Talem Mufuge. They are, these women, they are the one, they are the enemy to our community. They are the they are the enemy, they are the watchdog for the white men. These black women that you see here, these are the white men's watchdogs. Okay. Uh Ruvimbo Tenga, Dr. Talem Mufuge. The white woman is always involved when it comes to the destruction of the black nation. It happened during the 60s. You understand when we're fighting for civil rights, the white woman came and pushed LGBT. The black woman came and supported the white woman to destroy her own people. You can't make it up here. You see that another white woman, black woman, a simp in the midst of it too. You see that thing? These are the people that are pushing this garbage into our community. Now watch this. Let's go to the funders, the people that are funding this. Look at that. Open society, meaning we're open. You understand? This is the fourth wave of feminism. Department of Health, Western Cape. Hmm. Okay. V2V Healthcare, uh, United Kingdom. Bristol Mayor's Quick, that's not South Africa, that's New York. You see that thing? AIDS Health Foundation, AHF South, South Africa, AIDS Fonds, Netherlands, white people, Nakosa, okay, Global Fund, Vet Reproductive Health, and Reproductive Health, by the way, goes into, uh, I can gender fluidity. That, that's what this is going into. Guess what? The Department of Health, how take? United Nations AIDS. You see the organizations that are funding this movement? These are all white-owned organizations. And those that are like black or quote-unquote, they've got black faces, they are still funded by the, the white men. They are still funded by ESO. You brothers see this? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you something that will shock you even more. I want you to, you see, when I saw this one, really, it's part of the sweat. It's part of sweat, the sweat organization. Now, I want you to read this part right here. Mothers for the future. Mothers for the future, right? Read them. M4F is the program which supports mothers who do sex work by providing a safe place to meet organize and access support. You can't make it up. I want you to read that thing again. M4F is the program which supports mothers who do sex work by providing a safe place to meet, organize. Okay. Hold on. It says M4F is the, is the program which supports mothers, 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 mothers who do sex work by providing a safe place to meet, meaning their, their clients, organize and access support, which means this M4F, they will provide a safe, meaning they will come to your house and make sure that the environment is what? The environment is, is catered to support you in your, in your prostitution business while your child is gonna be what is gonna be in a safe environment in your house while you are doing your sex your sex work. You you brothers understand what's going on here? Yes, sir. Here you are, you have a you have a sister who's got a child. You understand? You have a sister who's got a child. The M4F says they're gonna pro, they're gonna create an environment for you to be able to, uh, to still have your child in the house while you are doing your prostitution business in the same house. They are, they are, that's their job. They want to help you to how to set it up. They will support you. So, because when there's sex, there's always drugs. There's always alcohol. Do you think the child is not going to pick this stuff up? We see it all the time in the movies. They, they show us how this goes down. 
Because it's legal now, you're going to be able to do it while your child is in the next room. Yeah. Read that. This place has to pay me. You know, the Lord needs to return. Oh my God, man. Read that. M4F is the program that began in 2013 which supports mothers who do sex work by providing a safe place to meet, organize and access support, as well as to build skills and share knowledge. What type of skills are they talking about? Hmm. Keep going. M4F utilizes a holistic approach to address these issues women sex workers face. So it's like, you see, that's why it says they frame mischief by a law. It's like, it's all, it's, it's this business concept that they are coming up with. Like this isn't that, it's, but, but because it is a business. Don't get it twisted. This is an actual business. It's a, it is a business. Don't get it twisted. It's a business. Okay, keep going. M4F addresses a number of needs, which include health needs, legal issues, lack of social support, and lack of emotional support. Mm, go ahead. M4F seeks to ensure a mother and a child's overall well-being by not focusing on the health issues a woman faces, but the emotional problems that come with being a woman, mother, and sex worker. You see that thing? So they give them, they giving them license to be a prostitute. They say, we will support you. They don't want to support them to get husbands. They don't want to support them to build families, to have marriages. No, they support them to be what? To be prostitutes and to be mothers while they are prostitutes. I'm trying to show you, because when it says being a woman, that means what? Independent woman, single mother, and a prostitute. Independent woman, single mother and a prostitute. The white man says, I'm gonna support you in this thing. Keep reading. This is a program that has been completely conceptualized, coordinated and controlled by a group of mothers whose primary source of income is sex work. Prostitution, because when they say sex work, they, they're making it less, it let make less, less, it meaning what? It what's the word? Meaning is 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 less dangerous. It's less demeaning. It's less frowned upon when they say no, no. It's prostitution. Now let's read that. Read that part for me. The M4F program has identified a number of objectives. These mm. are basic healthcare services, referrals, and education through home visits. Mm. Prenatal care highlight the importance, methods, and locations to access safe family planning. Say, listen, you, I'm going to show you, you see, this is the devil. You see what they are doing? They are creating an organization of prostitutes, right? Where they are going to what? They're going to provide, um, they're going to provide prenatal care services, which is the medical side where they are going to deal with when you are pregnant and so forth, um, how to deal with your child in the home while you are a prostitute, methods, locations, and, uh, and to access safe family planning. Meaning now you are, you are a prostitute, you want to have a child. Once the, before the child comes into the world, we need to create a safe environment. We need to create an environment where while you are still doing your sex work, you are, you are doing your prostitution work, you can what? your child can still be what? Be in a, in a so-called safe environment while you are doing this. Keep reading. Educate mothers on their human rights, refer mothers to legal support and assist with necessary applications, assist with relevant social development grants, mm. safe child care techniques, and link mothers to appropriate facilities or services. Meaning what? These single mothers that are prostitutes, because that's what it is. Sex work is prostitution. 
Iso, what Iso, you know what? You see what Iso is doing? Iso is building a business around this thing. Anybody see that? Yes, sir. That's what Iso is doing right here. Okay, go ahead. Psycho psychosocial support to mothers and encourage community to embrace mothers who are sex workers and their children. You see, listen. Psychosocial support to mothers and encourage community. The co now, so that means they're gonna build well uh, our, our awareness programs. They're gonna go to the communities to promote, to get the community in their corner, to get the community to agree. That's what they are saying. To embrace mothers, meaning to accept mothers that are prostitutes and to accept their children as well. These, these sisters, they need to repent. These sisters, they need to be taught how to love their children. You cannot be a prostitute and say you, you are a good mother. There is no way. You must repent from being a prostitute and be taught according to the Bible how to be a good mother, how to love your children. Being a prostitute, you are not, you, you, that's not loving your child. Because if, especially if you have a girl child, she's going to do what you do. Oh my God, man. You know, I see clearly Genesis 3 right here. I hope you brothers can see that. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Advocate for a comprehensive sexual reproductive health package. Mm. Support children of sex workers infected or affected by HIV and AIDS. What I'm trying to show is that ISO already knows the, the, the evils that goes with this business. ISO already knows the evils that surrounds it. That's why he's already setting up a business model to be able to deal with that. Oh, you're struggling with this? Don't worry. I, there's a company that can help you with this. Oh, you're struggling with that? Don't worry. I've got, listen, give me that in First Peter 4. Because the Apostle Peter, I talked about this thing, how our enemies, um, no, Second Peter 2, Second Peter 2 and verse 3. Watch this. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 3. Go ahead. And through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you. Stop right there. It says through covetousness. The white man is the most covetous man on this earth. It says, and through covetousness shall they with faint words, meaning fake words. The fake words is what we're reading here for we, uh, the program called Mothers for the Future. These are faint words. It's to deceive the white, the black woman. It says, faint words make merchandise of you. They're going to make money out of you being in sin. They're going to make money out of you, you breaking God's commandments. That's how the nations make money out of us. They make money out of us out of because we are in the midst of sin. That's what the Apostle Peter is explaining here. They will, they will faint words, like we're reading here, sex work. No, it's prostitution. Those are the faint words. They will make merchandise of you. Already, Israel is building a business around this thing. Already. You see all these things? Basic, basic healthcare services. Educate. Psychosocial support. Advocate. For a comprehensive sexual reproductive health packages. Meaning what? Reproductive health packages means... If you want to close your tubes, we'll provide that. Because that's what he's talking about here. Comprehensive sexual reproductive health packages. That goes into what? You want to tie your tubes now because you don't want to have more kids or you don't want to have kids, period. They're going to sterilize you and so forth so you cannot fall pregnant because that's your job. You see that thing? That's what they're going to do. And that also goes into what? You fall pregnant. Reproduct sexual, comprehensive sexual reproductive health packages means that they're going to provide abortion services too, where you can kill your child because you, 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 are, you are not ready to be a mother. So, and I, I don't want to sit through the whole nine months to give the birth to this child. So, Iso says he's, they're going to provide that for you. They're going to help you marry your baby. Support children of sex workers infected. Because, but remember, they said um, it's not just about their physical health because they made an implic in, in, they implied that sexually you are, you're, going, you're going to be healthy because they are going to provide a safe environment. But why is ISO here saying 
sex workers, children of sex workers infected and affected by HIV. How are they going to get it? How? Huh? I'm trying to show you like Esau is the damn devil. You understand? I hope you brothers can see that. Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. This is when Sarah was still the, the deputy president. This is 2016, right? Watch this. That means ask a prostitute. The, the national development plan with the sex workers plan, which is the prostitution plan, which is the plan to prostitute our, the plan to prostitute the daughters of Zion, because that's what Cyril is doing with this. Cyril has been given license by the white man to prostitute his own people, his own daughters, the black women. It is good and fitting that we should launch it on Human Rights Month. Mm. We cannot deny the humanity and the inalienable rights of people who engage in sex work. Sex work is essentially work as well. As Steve Biko said, we should and will be in a position to bestow upon our fellow citizens sex workers the greatest gift possible hold on brothers are you hearing this we can't yes, make sir. this stuff up you can't make this stuff up man so mm -hmm. he's quoting steve biko and steve biko said sex work is the greatest gift mm -hmm. ah come on hmm. a more human face that South Africa must bestow on them. And that is what we should show them. We should show them compassion. We should show them understanding. And we should show them the love that they deserve. Because they too are people just like you and me. That's democracy. I These want are to the blueprints of democracy. You understand? These are the blueprints of democracy. I want you brothers to pay attention. I want to end by inviting Koalipteles to come and stand right here next to me. Koalipteles is the leader of Sisonke, the national organization that represents sex workers in our country. I've called her here because as we embark on this journey of bestowing upon sex workers who are people like all of us, as we bestow upon them our humanity, the, humani the face of humanity, as we move in that direction, I want us to bestow upon Kohli and her colleagues, 
were sex workers, our national flower. Musholozi was the president, Musholozi didn't put this forth. Because look now, after Musholozi is long gone out of office, now they are revisiting this thing. You brothers see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now watch this. Give me that in first Maccabees 1. First Maccabees 1, we read verse 11. I'm going to show you what Sel Ramaphosa was doing here. Okay, this is what he was doing. Watch this. Read. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 11. Go ahead. In those days, when they out of Israel, wicked men. Busir Ramaphosa. Those are the, hold on. Busir Ramaphosa. Those are those wicked men that went out of Israel to do what? Go ahead. Who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. Go ahead. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Because now we are they are getting complaints from what from the women that want to that want prostitution to be legalized. When it says who persuaded many, how did they persuade many? They form talks like this to come and persuade the women that this is a good idea and to give the women promises that we're gonna do this thing for you saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen because the heathen, this is heathen culture. This is Greek culture. This is Roman culture. This is American and European culture. This thing of brothels and prostitution, all, that's not our culture. These are what they get. These, the Gentiles, that's what they do. The original Gentiles. So, but our people decided, you know what? We want to look like the heathen, so therefore we want license to do like the heathens. And the black woman is being given the license to do so. Who's supporting them? The black man who is a simp. Clueless black leaders will support this because why? They're getting crumbs that are falling from the white man's table. Europe, America, China, as an example. You understand? Jump down to verse 12. Read verse 12. Keep reading. So this device pleased them well. This device please this plan. This plan of legalizing prostitution, it pleased them well because there's, there's going to get what? They're going to get benefits. They're going to get funders and so forth. You understand? They will get supported and they will push the same thing in the black community. Because remember, these prostitutes and the things they do, which is have sex and sell sex, sell their bodies and all that, it, there's a business model that is built around it. You understand? Go ahead. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. So who's the king in this in, the, in this instance? Because back then was Antiochus the fourth. And this during in this time period we're living in, America is the king. America is the king, Europe supporting America. So he says, What they went to the king, meaning America and Europe. Who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen? What is the license? Legalization of prostitution. And guess who's funding the organization sweat that Kuli is part of? Orgi Kuli. Guess what? You see that part right there when it says um, to give them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen? Because that organization, this movement is not going to move forward if there's no funding for it. So that's why the vice president then, Sarah Ramaphosa, has to, had to get involved to show that he supports it. It's called being lobby. It's called lobbying. So the people that are behind him will, will what? 
will deal, will talk to him behind closed doors and say, listen, go there and support them because we're behind this movement. So you have to show face that you support this movement. You see that thing right there? Okay. Now, watch this. Read verse 15. First book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 15. Go ahead. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant. Wait. Right. And joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. They, he said they made themselves uncircumcised, meaning what? To hell with God's laws, okay, and forsook the holy covenant. What is the holy covenant? The commandments of the most high God. In this context, what? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Your body is not for fornication, but it's for the Lord. You understand? They said to hell with that. They joined themselves unto the heathen and what? They were sold to do mischief. What is the mischief? Pushing prost legalized prostitution to our daughters in the community. You understand? That's what it's going into. Give me that in Leviticus 19, verse 29. We're going to close it up. Leviticus 19, verse 29. Let's read that again. Because what Sarah Ramaphosa was doing here, he was what? He was prostituting his own daughters, the black women. Because the white man gave Sarah a license to do what? To do after the heathen and the what? And allow the black woman, because remember, the black women always like to say they are independent, but they need the, a man to allow them to do these things. The man has to make the final decision. Every rights that the black woman has, the black man has to make, the man, whether he be black or white, the man, a man had to say, yes, we agree to do this too for you. That's it. Now read that, Leviticus 19, 29. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 29. Go ahead. Do not prostitute thy daughter. Wait. Right. Cause her to be a whore. Mm -hmm. Lest the land fall to hoarding. Wait. Right. And the land become full of wickedness. You see that thing? The Lord is saying, don't prostitute your daughters. And that's what you just saw here. Was Sir Ramaphosa then the deputy president? He was what? He was prostituting his own daughters. He was giving his own daughters license to be prostitutes by saying no, the sex work plan, making it equivalent to the national development plan. You can't make this stuff up. You understand? These are the so-called true, these are the so-called leaders that our people look up to. And their job is to destroy their own people. That's what they're doing. You understand? They are destroying their own people. That's their agenda. Everything that they do is to support white supremacy and the oppression of the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Lord. Let's break bread. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he, has, he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.